انا بس بعمل لها شير على الفيسبوك واول ما ندخل هبتدي على طول المفروض بتيجي في حتة هي مش راضية تعمل لايف 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 لسه أنا هبتدي الانترودكشن والدكتور ملاح يبتدي وبعدين أنا أكمل أه نعمل أدميشن لكل الناس بقى ادميت اول بس خلي عينك عليهم يا دكتور عبد المجيد بعد اذنك كله ميوتد ماشي دكتور عبد المجيد دكتور عبد المجيد سامعني تمام بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اهلا بيكم في قناه رسميه لقسم طب جراحه العيون في طب الازهر مش شرفنا النهارده الاستاذ دكتور محمود اسماعيل رئيس القسم وزعيم الناس اللي دايما تحب التدريس You are all welcome to the uh, official channel of the Ophthalmic Department at Azhar University. Uh, we are hosting this uh, uh, event with, the, uh, with our colleagues, uh, Professor Dr. Tari Nagar, uh, Research Institute of Ophthalmology, Professor Dr. Mohammed Eid, uh, sorry, Professor Dr. Mohammed Khidr, uh, Professor of Ophthalmology at Azhar University, Professor Abdul Mugid Tagiddin, Professor of Ophthalmology at Azhar University, uh, Professor Hatim Ammar, which will be available soon, uh, Head of the Department, Suhag University, in addition to Professor Mohammed Al Malah, uh, senior, uh, senior Consultant of Kala, uh, Florida. Uh, he is one of the uh, Egyptian eminent doctor in USA, and we will be waiting for uh, uh, Dr. Tari Badawi, uh, General Dr. Tari Badawi from the police uh, hospitals, uh, and uh, Dr. Ayman Salah, the Chief Executive Officers of the Air, uh, Egypt Air uh, Health Services, who will join us soon. Hi, Dr. Uh, Mohammed. Uh, I'm, I'm here, alhamdulillah. I'm you here. are here. Okay, Alan, Dr. Tari. Alan, I'm going to show you Dr. Amigid, the Khalak. دكتور طارق بيه اهلا وسهلا ومشرفنا النهارده اهلا بيكم هير وي هاف ا لوت اوف ايشوز تو تو انتروديوس ذا فيرست وان از دكتور محمد ملاح فروم يو اس اي هي از هي ويل ويل جيف اس ا هاند اباوت نارو بيوبل مانجمنت دورينج فيكو اند ارجنتين فلاج مانجمنت ذن فولود باي دكتور طارق نجار هو ويل توك اباوت هيز انوفاتيف تكنيك فيكو كابسولوتومي In intumescent cataracts, then it will be followed by me for into, in uh, a, a bunch of cases with intumescent cataract in different situations, in certain nuclear assembly in different situations, and the open capsule before nuclear removal. Followed by Dr. Hatem Ammar, he will talk about hard rock cataract, open posterior capsule with IOL scaffold, posterior bolar cataract. Then uh, Dr. Mohammed Khidri will talk about Ectopia Lentis, followed by lens subluxation and his uh, nice techniques for uh, fixing this problem. Problems. Then Professor Abdel Megid Tag will talk about post-operative progressive hyperopia, then management of subluxated IOL and traumatic iris dialysis. Then Professor Tariq Bada will talk about IOL on a torn capsule and another case of three IOLs in one eye. The last one we'll talk uh, is Dr. Ayman Salah. He will talk about femtocatrach surgery. Uh, now I'm asking Dr. Uh, Dr. Mohammed Malah to start his presentation. I will stop sharing my screen now. Dr. Malah. Thank you, uh, Dr. Mohammed Mahdi, for that introduction. And thank you for uh, arranging uh, this meeting. It really is an honor to be part of this and, and to uh, hopefully just share with you some of the pearls that I've learned over the years. Um, 
I think we have the, the chat uh, available. If anyone has questions, please feel free to submit questions uh, through that if you're on the Zoom meeting. And really for today, what I'm gonna talk about is uh, management of the small pupil. Um, I was gonna present the Argentinian case, uh, but I think Argentinian flag sign, but I think we have a lot of presenters, a lot of interesting cases. So I'm gonna try and keep this, uh, limit this talk to just uh, 15 minutes or so. Um, so management of the small pupil. Um, we all come across these cases. And I just wanna share a few uh, pearls uh, to success, a few keys to success in managing the small pupil. Really, um, it's very important that we recognize this problem preoperatively. That's really the key here. Whenever you examine the patient at the slit lamp, note the size of the pupil when the patient is dilated. Uh, look for any signs of pseudo exfoliation, as obviously that can cause make, make dilation more difficult. And I, I, I ask patients about any history of management. to obviously enlarge the pupil, and that can be done with uh, several different methods. We can stretch the pupil, we can use mechanical devices, and sometimes we can just do a viscodilation and proceed with surgery. If we are gonna proceed in the case where we don't have a mechanical device, um, what we'll present some pearls about doing the capsulorexis in these cases. Uh, as well as the techniques for phaco emulsification. Uh, it really, when we use phaco chop, it makes these surgeries easier to do. And also we'll talk about ways to how I retract the iris in these cases. So we'll get started with, with some of the videos. Um, so this is, uh, you know, posterior sinicii, like I said, is where the iris is adhered to the anterior capsule. And it's very uh, straightforward usually to separate those adhesions using a cyclodialysis spatula or an iris spatula or any blunt uh, second instrument, really. In this case, the, the pupil was a little bit off center and we recentered re the pupil using the pupil hook. This is another case um, where the pupil is adhered to the lens. And you can see just with the viscoelastic itself, the pupil opens up. Uh, we then go in and release the rest of the adhesions using, again, the cyclodialysis uh, spatula. If at any point in time you guys are not hearing me, please let me know, and I'll repeat. So um, after you release the sinicii, you know, the sinicii, you want to go ahead and just inject viscoelastic with dilated pupil. Another case where we see the pupil is really quite small here, and we have to spend some time uh, releasing these adhesions. Um, but with time, it does come. It just will take, require some patience in order to be able to do that. But it will require you, it will make the case significantly easier uh, once these adhesions are all, all released. So you can see in this patient, these adhesions really went around 360 degrees and then with viscoelastic, we're able to open up the pupil and, and proceed with surgery. So the first step is, is to deal with, with the, any sinicii or any adhesions that may be present. So how about actually, um, let's see here. How about actually expanding the pupil? Um, so we can expand, we can, we can stretch the pupil using uh, multiple techniques. You can use two second instruments, uh, two Kuglin hooks and stretch the pupil and kind of tear the sphincter. That can make it uh, easier to do the procedure. My technique of choice really is to use the Malugan ring. Uh, I also use iris hooks, uh, but I really do prefer the Malugan ring for its ease of insertion and ease of removal. And it does give you a very stable uh, pupil. Um, for those of you who have not used the Malugan ring, 
it has four scrolls and these scrolls each engage the iris and it really allows for eight points of fixation to the iris. So as you insert it, it's nice to engage the scrolls at the same time. It makes it easier to do, uh, it make, saves you a little bit of time, but it's absolutely not necessary. There are many times where we insert the Malugan ring and the scrolls don't engage the iris. And then we just use a second instrument to, uh, to engage the iris. Hey, sir, is that clitoris? So um, here we're just using a kugel and hook, and we're and we're uh, engaging the uh, the iris, and and really just uh, this gives us a very nice uh, stable uh, chamber. So as far as removing um, the Mayugan uh, ring. We unhook um, the scroll. Is, is that testis? Is that testis? I think we got some uh, jealous fans here. And then we just uh, basically remove the scroll. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Hello. Excuse me, sir. Jay Shriram. Jay Shriram. And then we remove it again with the inserter. Another way to remove it Excuse is. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. I have a doubt. Excuse me, sir. Inserter. So, can I ask my doubt? So, we can take the scroll down. Sir, can I ask my doubt? Sir, is it Shriram? Allah, what more? Allah, what more? And then he's West Castle with the Papa Yugen ring. That's it, really. Um, I just want to show this video that it can't, you can use the Yugen ring to really open up a very small future. Allah, what bird? Allah, bird. Sir, Assalamu Alaikum, sir. Sir, Assalamu Alaikum. Sir, To really unhook it, even even the small pupil. Assalamu alaikum. Let's dance. Let's dance. Let's dance. Doctor Malah. Allah Akbar. Please, Doctor Malah. I will mute all. Then I'm. Allah, Akbar! Allah, Akbar! Allah, Akbar! And I turn left round. Allah, Akbar! Lachbar! Lachbar! Mashi! Mashi! Ayo! 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 All right, can you hear me now? I've, um, sorry for that interruption there. Okay, all right. So, very good. So we talked about really, uh, I would just not admit anyone else to the room. 
So I would just leave it the way it is right now. Don't admit anyone else. And certainly just uh, mute everybody, inshallah. Inshallah. Okay. Very good. Go ahead, Dr. Mahal. Okay. So we talked about uh, basically how to, di- how to use an Al-Yugan ring, how to dilate the pupil. Oftentimes, though, I don't use any rings, and I just go ahead and proceed if I'm able to get a, you know, a four or four and a half millimeter pupil. Um, the, I just want to be able to have a pupil that's big enough to do the capsular rexus. So um, it's okay to actually take the capsular rexus edge all the way to the pupillary margin. And sometimes, uh, as you do in the capsulotomy, uh, it will go underneath uh, the iris edge. I think, for me, I think that's actually fine to do. I was always taught uh, and, and, uh, when I was in training not to do that. But I found that whenever you go underneath the iris edge, it's very, extremely rare that the iris, that the capsulotomy will, will extend. And um, so I do a capsulorexis that's approximately the size of the pupil, maybe a little bit larger than the pupil. I use a FACO chop technique, uh, which basically allows you to operate in the very small central area. Um, and that's basically, I think, uh, my key uh, to success with doing small pupil cases and not really having to be dependent on pupil expansion devices is that we're able to do this uh, all, everything centrally, using a horizontal chop uh, technique. Um, so... Basically, you know, we, we insert the inter, intraocular lens and we do irrigation aspiration, remove the cortical material, insert, insert the intraocular lens. And then I use this instrument, um, the Charvel uh, nuclear splitter, which is actually works really nicely to retract the iris and remove any remaining cortical material. We also want to check the position of the intraocular lens, uh, make sure that it's inside the capsular bag. Uh, here I use another uh, retractor, a Connor wand. And we will check the position position of the lens. We also want to make sure there's no uh, residual cortical material uh, present. Um, So basically, to uh, to summarize, uh, the key success with small pupil cases is to recognize preoperatively that you may have a problem going into surgery. Second is to use intracameral, intracameral epinephrine, which will help prevent the pupil from coming down during the procedure. Uh, manage any adhesions between the uh, pupil and the lens. Uh, then you have to enlarge the pupil, and this can be done either with stretching the pupil or using iris hooks or malugan ring. And then we can, uh, if we're, uh, or if the pupil is dilated about four or five millimeters and you feel comfortable, you can just use viscodilation and proceed with surgery. Uh, the capsulorexis, I find it's okay. Uh, you want the capsulorexis to be as large as possible. I think it's okay to go slightly underneath, to go slightly underneath uh, the edge of the uh, of the pupillary margin. I use a FACO chop technique. Hold on a minute here. I use a FACO chop um, technique uh, to. Um, uh, to help remove the, the lens and that allows you to work centrally. And then we uh, use whatever instrument we like to retract the iris. This is some pearl success with small pupil cases. And if you plan in advance, you can have great success with these cases. And that's it, really. Um, thank you. So I have uh, videos that I, uh, I have a video library online uh, on both YouTube and Instagram. The handle is IMD76. Uh, And there's a collection of some videos that I've put up there as well. So thank you, Dr. Mohammed, for allowing me to participate in this this forum. Um, These Zoom meetings, it seems that when we publicize them, we get all sorts of of, uh, attention and uh, people trying to, uh, you know, uh, crash the meeting. But we'll do our best to continue and keep those voices uh, muted. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Malah.
Uh, uh, now, uh, thank you very much. Uh, now I am asking Professor Tarek Nagar to start his presentation. Please share your screen. Tarek? Tarek Nagar, do you hear me? Do you hear me now? I think yes, I was muted. Yes, yes, now yeah. I hear you. I can put on you just start to share. Go ahead. Uh, um, thank you, Dr. Malah, for his nice presentation. Um, I will try to talk about uh, the techniques that I adapted. It's not actually my own technique, but I adapted this technique because um, I have seen uh, so many cases of anti-omescent cataracts, and I know that we are all fearing the Argentine flag uh, problem that can occur and lead to jeopardizing the results of our uh, uh, cataract surgery. So I adapted this technique. Actually, this was uh, started in 2014 in um, journal in Nibal, and uh, it was adapted by many surgeons around the world. And I have seen it in um, journal of cataract and refractive surgery. Uh, can you hear me well? And can you see my screen now? We hear you, Dr. Tari. Uh, start to share uh, within moments at Hazar Shell with Hadrata. احنا سامعين حضرتك بس لسه الشير ما بدأش اوكي كده ناو اتس اوكي جريك وي اول نو ذات ذا بروبلم وذ انتيوميسن كاتركس از ذا انترا لينتيكولار بريشر ذا مين بروبلم ذات وي ار فيسينج بيسايد اتس وايد اند وي كان سي ذا كابسول ويل بات وي نو ذات وي كان جيت ريد اوف ذس بروبلم وذ جود ستينينج وذ تريبان بلو but the thing is, there is a pressurized eye. It's a bomb, a taking bomb. That if you perforate it in the wrong way, you can end up with the well-known Argentine flag appearance, and you cannot get your um, uh, capsule rexus uh, uh, well, which is um, uh, a main step in cataract surgery. I will show you the technique uh, here. Um, we we have the, we we know the names of the night before the nightmare that we should think about the the problem before we start to go ahead and do the surgery. You can see here the start with the regular uh, main incision. I don't start with the secondary incision. I start with the main incision and then I inject air with tray band blue to stain the uh, epithelium of the capsule. And then I wash the. Uh, the Triban blue well before I inject my OVD. I start here with the, after washing, I start with a cohesive uh, OVD, uh, preferably Helon or even Helon GV or Helon 5, that you can fill well the anterior uh, chamber and pressurize it. You, know, you want to have the anterior chamber with a good pressure to uh, not let the, the pressure and here you start with your fricative. I will pause here to uh, show you what I'm doing now. I don't do anything except introducing my fricative with uh, fluid on, and then I invert the the tip of the uh, the the so it um, it will be um, uh, bevel down. The parameter here is like sculpting technique. We have. Um, a high uh, torsional pressure, and we always and we also have um, um, uh, medium va vacuum and uh, uh, medium aspiration rate. For example, you start with 50 or 60 torsional, and now I'm grasping the capsule with the fake tip, and I aspirate. I press to the third step of the uh, bedel, and I get a good uh, punch of the anterior capsule and I aspirate the cortical material or the liquefied cortical material with this intumescent case. So I um, get rid of the pressurized lenticule. After this, I inject uh, OVD, again cohesive. And now the pressurized, the pressure inside the capsule is normal. It's not high and I can start my FECO Technique or I can't my, my capsular excess the normal way. My, I, I usually prefer to uh, do uh, to do it with cystotome, and I can still do it with cystotome here.
I don't have to make the, the capsular excess here small as usual in infumescent cases because I get rid of the uh, uh, um, liquefied material inside the bag and the pressure is normalized. Still, I can see some uh, cortical material getting out, but not leading to any form of pressure inside the bag because I aspirated well with, high va with my vacuum with the machine. So uh, you turn the, uh, the FECO uh, procedure into a normal pressure FECO procedure here. I'm doing my RICS slowly. But I want to make sure that the, uh, the size of the RICS is, is good. This patient was uh, uh, 70 something years old with uh, a recent uh, or a history of recent change in the, uh, the blaring vision. So it's not uh, an intumescent base, uh, uh, on top of brown uh, cataract or something. This is an edited video form, but the rest of the operation will be uh, quicker than this one. You can see now you have a decent site rexus after the FACO capsulotomy. And now you can proceed with your uh, FACO. I just inject some sort of uh, dispersive viscoelastic to uh, protect the endothelium of the cornea. Because I'm trying to do it intracapsular and I'm not sure of the, the nules, I will eat most of the uh, uh, cataract inside the capsule or in the pupillary plane. And then you will end after doing the uh, quick uh, wash, uh, washing of the capsule and inject your lens in a normal manner. Will you, I, I will show you another video showing uh, if you are facing another problem that you are having already an Argentine flag. This video, I call it uh, uh, anterior capsule rupture because it's not uh, an Argentine flag cell. But after staining, you start with the normal technique, not with the FACO capsulotomy here. I start with just puncturing the anterior capsule and trying to aspirate the liquefied cortical material. By this technique, I take my time injecting viscoelastic and aspirating the cortical material. Well, Tata, to we're, pressurize them. we're not seeing your Hello? video. We're not seeing your video, Dr. Tata. You're not seeing it? No. <laughs> yeah, it's a video stop. I think you stopped sharing your screen. Just a minute. Uh, sure. Just a minute, please. Okay. Can you see it now? You are on Dr. Can, you can see it now. Okay. Okay. So you haven't missed much uh, because I just uh, punked.
flag appearance here in this area. Can, can you see the mouse here, the cursor here? Yes, Dr. Sorry. Okay, I see the mouse. We see the mouse. Okay. Now the question, how would you continue this case? We have several options to uh, revert to the extra capture cataract extraction. You can try to continue HACO. You can do whatever. Uh, uh, well, Dr. Tari, if you can extract the nucleus into supracapsular uh, level, you may continue. Continue, Feku. While I will start, this is what I'm doing, actually. I'm starting to make some releases, like the can openers or can, can openers. The problem, if you have single release with the expansion of the tear, you will end up uh, with a posterior capsule tear. But if you have several releases, it, it makes the pressure uh, all over this uh, small expansion. And I you can- you transmit, I, you transmit the force? Around uh, so, 360 the capsule. Exactly, exactly. Not to one degree or one uh, area. So I can still do my FACO, but uh, I know because of the recent uh, history of this patient, this is not a brown cataract. So I will not uh, take uh, too uh, long or uh, doing a hard FACO. So I can, like you said, uh, get it in two halves into the supracapsular place and do my FACO. Because I have done uh, several cases, I wasn't afraid to do this, but you have to keep an eye on the slab and you can keep an eye on your uh, rexes uh, in case you, you, you will uh, get any expansion into the posterior capsule. Of course, you do a very slow FACO. This is an, a speeding up uh, video. You have to be very slow and use very low parameters. Uh, and not to get out with your FACO tab unless you're injecting uh, uh, viscoelastic inside the eye to keep the eye pressurized, not to let the, the whole capsular uh, uh, to bulge from the pupil. Yeah, I'm getting rid of the uh, uh, cortical material. This soft cortical material, although this patient is uh, 70 something, but the cortex was liquefied because it's an intermittent part. Again, before I leave, I inject facial elastic. And one of the things that you should be aware of while injecting the, the, the lens inside the bag should be very slow and cautious not to make the rexus or the capsulotomy expand. You just try to make it in away from the direction of the first expansion or the extension of the capsule. And now we have a good uh, uh, fake one. You can even wash, uh, sorry, you can even uh, polish the capsule and get rid of the small remnants if you have some remnants in the anterior capsule. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Tariq. Dr. Mahmoud. Dr. Mahmoud Smail. Any, any question? Thank you, Dr. Tariq, for your nice presentation. Dr. Mahmoud Smail. Uh, I'm mute, Dr. Mahmoud Smail, at the Magid. We don't hear you, Dr. Mahmoud. شكرا يا دكتور منعم اولا انا بشكركم جدا وبشكر الدكتور طارق والحقيقه انا برحب بالدكتور حاتم عمار رئيس اقسام الرماد في جامعه سوهاج اللي منورنا النهارده رغم مشاغله واحنا بنشكره جدا 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 على ان هو يعني جويننج اس النهارده يو ار ويلكم يا دكتور حاتم بيه وانا هسيب بالدكتور منعم لان هو اللي هيكمل ان شاء الله اتفضل يا دكتور منعم تمام <تصفيق> انا اولا انا احب ارحب بال زميلنا الفاضل دكتور حاتم بي عمار اهلا وسهلا uh, I will start my presentation now I'm just waiting for the screen to uh, okay. uh, What I'm going to talk about now is uh, I'm going to talk about a bunch of cases Number one, I want to go to 
continue in the same stream as my previous colleagues talk about for the intermittent cataract. On the left side, you will see a, a, a regular intermittent cataract. Then on the right side, you will see one with extension that has been saved. Uh, the most important in the left side, you can see here, in this intermittent cataract, I have stained everything, then I removed the stain. And uh, while I'm removing the stain, I inject viscoelastic here, fill it completely, then I'm starting the, uh, I'm starting the capsulotomy with the insulin tip. Once I started, you will see that the milky material will escape out. At that time, I'm ready with an empty syringe on, an, on a helon cannula. I will, I will evacuate this milky material and refill the anterior chamber with viscoelastic. I'm evacuating the, visco, the milky material now. Then I will refill the anterior chamber with viscoelastic. I will continue in the regular way. Here, I'm filling again, then I will continue in a regular way. It will be very fast. If you come to the right side, I start the same procedure here, but I see because of some, in order to do a good rexis, you should have a counter traction force that works in the opposite direction. Now I see here in that side, it is not come, going to go well. I'm afraid that this one will extend to the far periphery. That's why I will re restart to complete the rexis from the opposite side, as you see here. I completed it now. Then I will try to enlarge the rexis a little bit. Here I'm, el I'm enlarging the rexis in a, a semi can opener one. Then I, to make it more or less regular in order to be able to complete my FECO. You can see it here, it's completed. Then I removed the capsule. Then I will go and do divide and conquer. I, re I rotate the nucleus as always without hydrosection because there's no need. I always do a trench, then I do cross division, then I remove the quadrants, as you can see here. Then each quadrant, the quadrant will be divided, then it will be completely divided. I will remove them all followed by okay then cortical clean up and the uh, insertion of the IOL and you could see that this capsule it, it is not that much extended to the periphery as I was expecting but I was afraid to lose the case that's why I resorted to go from up I am bulging the capsule and I am inserting the lens. Now I am refilling. The capsule is intact completely and the case is saved. Fold of liable is inserted and the case is closed. Now it's okay. And it's fixed it and it's finished. Uh, the next case will be another case of intumescent cataract I go also with Argentinian phylaxine. Always before I start, I'm ready with an empty syringe on a helium cannula. Now I started to do, and I asked the nurse, where is the syringe? She was not ready yet. You will see now how the, uh, the milky material is going out by the enteral lenticular pressure was high. You see that this one is getting too enlarged. While I'm waiting and I have nothing to do, just waiting to evacuate the capsule. That's why we should be ready and we should double check with the nurses that they are ready. Of course, this case was saved, as you can see later on, but it's impossible to start to the rexis with, an, with a new edge. I'm starting, but it is hard. I will convert it to a semi. I'm trying to restart. Uh, uh, capsule is here, but it is difficult because there's no counter traction force. I'm starting the other side with a semi can opener one to convert this one into a more or less regular one. 
then I will enlarge it. While I'm trying to pull, it is difficult because of this radial extension. I will pull in the opposite direction in order to create a more, another cut. You see, here I will pull in this direction now to cut it. This is the trick here. If I continue pulling like this, it will not come. It will extend completely. That's why I will pull it in the opposite direction just to cut it. You see here? Then I will restart the rectus. Now I created the edge. I will continue with the rectus now. Now I, I did the inferior half. I will go back to the superior half to enlarge the rectus. I will do little can opener. Then I will do the same as I was doing earlier in the inferior half. But here it is very difficult because it is away from your hand. It is just at 12 o'clock and I'm refilling the anterior chamber every now and then with viscoelastic. But most of our difficulties come that from the fact that we are using more, mostly uh, missile cellulose. If we are using helon, it will be much more easier. I will continue enlarging the rex in this part, as you could see here. Then, now I converted it to a little bit regular capsulorexis with unstable radial extension. I don't know exactly where it extended. I rotated the nucleus to be sure. Otherwise, if you don't have rotated the nucleus, it will be difficult. Now I divided the nucleus into quadrants. I'm removing the quadrants. Then, After removal of the quadrants, you could see here, this is the, this is the capsule. But, and also because of the radial tears, you could see that the capsule is redundant, as you could see here with this fold. You see this one? This is not a tear, but it is a, a, a fold in the capsule. Then, now the, the case is finished and stable. I removed what remains of the cortex and I closed the case. Now I save this case, okay? Then I'm going to the next one, which is inside the nuclear disassembly. If we have a case of zonulopathy, like phaco emulsification in a case of pseudo oxygenation, as you could see here, or a posterior polar cataract where uh, you are not able to do a complete hydro dissection, I always resort to do in situ nucleus disassembly without rotating the nucleus. Uh, here, I'm afraid to do complete hydro dissection because of the weak zonules. Then I'm clearing out the superficial cortex. I'm doing division of the capsule, uh, sorry, division of the nucleus while it is in place. Then I will deepen the trench, dividing the nucleus into hemonuclei. Then I will use a neutralized the ergonomics of the phaco tip of the Kelman flare tip with this side movement to do a side cuts in the hemi-nuclei. Then I divide each hemi-nuclei into quadrant, uh, two quadrants and remove the inferior quadrants so I create a space to work with without avoid, with avoiding. The, here I divided this one into another two quadrants. Then it is divided here. Then I will start removing the quadrants. Now I'm deepening, it is not, you now it is divided. Then I'm removing the quadrants now. It, you always fake in the safe zone, in the center of the bubble, away from the capsule and away from the cornea. Now you can rotate the remaining part of the nucleus without fear of zonular dehiscence or zonular tears and the case will be completed as usual and i will insert the iol as you could see later on i'm clearing up the cortex 
I always prefer to go from one side. Don't go, don't go in and out, in and out. It's not preferred. I complete all the hydro, sorry, the cortical cleanup from the same incision. Then I'm inserting the lens as usual. This is one technique to do inside the nuclear disassembly, as you could see here. It, this is another technique, the V-shaped. If you, if you are not familiar with this one, or you don't have this bent uh, Kelman tip, you could do a V-shaped, a V-shaped nuclear disassembly without rotation. The other case is a posterior polar cataract here. While we are finishing the excess, this one will be completed, as you can see here, on the right side, completing the incision, then hydro, hydro. You can see here. Then I'm trying to rotate the nucleus a little bit, which is difficult. So, but it rotates a little bit. Then I will create two grooves in a V-shaped way. I will clear out the superficial cortex first. Then I will go to the V-shaped gutter to create a wedge in the center. As you can see here, I'm digging the, the trench, digging the trench. Then I'm I always utilize this in cases with difficult rotation. Now, then we, we divide this into three bars and you remove this center within the other bars. If we come to this case here, this is posterior polar cataract and it is difficult to do a forcible hydro dissection. So I do multiple hydro dissection in different quadrants. Then after this, I'm clearing up the superficial cortex. Then I'm doing division of the nuclei in situ without rotation, as you could see here, as we saw in the other case. Then I remove all the quadrants. As you can see here, and you'll see that the cortex was completely adherent to the posterior capsule. As you could see, and you'll see it is in, as, with a clear area in the posterior pole. It will come now, that's why I'm using the laser pointer. Come. Once I complete the removal of the uh, quadrants, <clears throat> you could see here, this is not a tear in the posterior capsule. It is, it is, a clear area because the cortex was completely adherent here. I removed, once I saw this shiny reflex, I was afraid, but this is not, this is clear posterior capsule in the center and you should be careful while doing these cases. Then I am inserting the lens in the usual way, as you could see here, clearing up, then I'm inserting the lens, okay. Then, if we have a small capsular tear during sculpt, are you going to do complete, to complete the FECO? I'm demonstrating the case here. Magnet of posterior capsular tear during sculpt. It is an edited video in BART, and I made it slow in, one, in some BART and fast in the others. I'm going with the rexus as usual. Then, while doing the trench. Yeah. Suspicious sinus reflex I saw here, but I paid attention to this one. You see this one? It is suspicious. I divided the nucleus, but putting in mind that I might have a problem here. I, I rotated the nucleus, it rotates well with me. Then I removed the quadrants. I remove the quadrant in the usual manner.
Here we should utilize the property of the visco dispersive missile CD loads. I'm injecting visco dispersive here. You see, this is this is the area where there is a posterior rim. I'm injected the viscoelastic. I tam I stretch the capsule, push the vitreous posteriorly, then I'm clearing out the cortical material away from the area of the problem. And the last part to be played with is the the last part to play with is the is the area where the problem is, as you can see here. And avoid vigorous manipulation here in order not to dilate one. While I, while I am seeing it, it is dilating. I inject the viscoelastic again before escaping from the anterior chamber. The capsule is stretched. The vitreous is back. Then I used a wide bored cannula, the one of the, the missile, not the helium. I am aspirated. I aspirated the the remaining part of the cortical material, then I implanted the lens in the usual way without any anterior capture, anterior vitrectomy. I insert things the lens inside the bag without any problem. As you can see here. Sorry. Yeah, it's, you could see it's here. Then it's finished. Now, uh, the, if you have a moderate posterior capsule tear, this, not, this small one, it's controllable. If you have a moderate posterior capsule tear, which you are in danger of losing the fragment or the nuclear material inside to the posterior vitreous, I am doing the rexes in the usual manner. I am doing the... I am doing the hydro dissection. This was soft cataract with difficult hydro dissection, but I think it was my fault that I do vigorous vigorous rotation of the nucleus, which didn't rotate well. I divided the nucleus, as you could see here. Okay, go ahead. And rotated the nucleus. In case of big rent, it will not rotate. But as long as the vitreous is stable a little bit, you could rotate the nucleus. This sudden loss of the anterior, anterior chamber you could see here, the anterior chamber collapsed. I remained inside, then I injected viscoelastic. I don't know exactly what happened. It, was it related to this incident or because of the vigorous maneuver? Now you could see here, I see the shiny red reflex. Here there's some vitreous. I kept inside, inserted the cannula, injected viscoelastic, then I'm clearing up the uh, cortex away from the area of the problem. The area of the problem it will be the last one to be touched. Okay, I didn't do any anterior vitrectomy till now. I'm, I'm utilizing the property of the viscoelastic to tamponade the vitreous posteriorly. Here, you could see that the rent is under, in the posterior capsule is little bit toward this superior temporal area. Then I did an anterior vitrectomy. And luckily I don't have a three piece. I, I widened the incision. Then I used the BMMA lens. And the case of course is saved without loss of any nuclear material. As you could see here, I inserted the lens in sulcus and the case is okay. The last case, it will be another case of zonular dialysis with capsular tincture ring insertion. Most of the problem comes from hydrodissection incomplete, nucleus is not rotating well, or some incident happened like loss of anterior chamber because of the fluidics has occluded or the people removed the bottle without notifying you. Here I am completing the capsular excess. Then I'm doing a hydro dissection. There's no good health. This, this was a very old lady. While I'm rotating the nucleus, I, I noted here this, this zonular dialysis, as you could see in this area. You see, this is the edge of the nucleus, the edge of the lens. Then I tamponaded the anterior chamber with the viscoelastic. Then I'm dividing the nucleus. 
rotation in the direction of the tear, not away from it, utilizing the side movement, if you could see, and you might be, you utilize the nuclear material to support the capsule. Then after division, I'm removing the quadrants, as you could see here. After removal of the quadrants, while there is a posterior uh, uh, epinuclear plaque, which cannot be removed with the uh, IA cannula and should be removed with the tip of the ear. Here, it's clear. This, this is a posterior epinuclear plaque. I tried to remove it before, before injection of the capsular tension ring, but it was difficult and this collapse of the bag, as you could see here. That's why I left it in place. I left the, the capsule back. I filled the capsular bag with the uh, viscoelastic, inserting the capsular tension ring. It will be very difficult to remove this one, uh, this even nucleus, while the capsule tension ring is inside the bag. Now the capsule tension ring will be fixed and it is supporting the bag in this arc, which about half of the circumference of the uh, capsule, the equator. Now I will try to do remove the uh, even nucleus utilizing the uh, FACO tab. It was difficult. As you could see here, then I, I did some visco dissection. You know, I, I should try to this one. I'm trying to remove it carefully. I did visco dissection, injected visco between the, the anterior capsule and the even nucleus to uh, make it available a little bit away from the capsule. Then I removed most of the even nucleus with the FACO tab, as you could see. Then I'm clearing out the remaining part of the uh, cortical material. Then I'm inserting the lens in the usual way in the bag without problem. And I think this will be the last case that I will present now. Once it's finished, I will ask Professor uh, Hatim Ammar to give his nice talk that we are waiting for. Now I'm inserting the lens inside the bag after completely clearing out the lens and it was completely stable. You could see here that the, the tissues of the patient is not that malleable enough. It is soft. Now the case is completed. Thank you very much for your attention. Now I'll stop sharing Thank my... Thank you, Dr. Mohammed. Dr. Hatem Ammar, inshallah, for his presentation. Please, Dr. Hatem, share your, start to share your screen. Are we, do, are we going on time? Uh, please, I'm, I'm yeah, yeah. We, we are three. We presented in one hour. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. منورين كلكم والله انا سعيد باني ابقى معاكم وان شاء الله ميتنج جميله بس حضرتك اديني اسمح سكرين شيرنج انا داخل كي اتن دي على فكره انت عملته كو هوست يا دكتور عبد المجيد؟ لا ما عملتش اي ديد ات بس هو ممكن يعمل من غير ما يبقى كو هوست ستارت لا 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 ممنوع انا مانع انا مانع طب خش خش ظبط عمار صح؟ اوكي جاست مومنت ميك ا كو هوست اوكي Now you have the privilege, Dr. Hatim, you can share. Okay. Thank you very much for your Dr. Mohamed Mahdi. Thank you, Dr. Mahmoud Ismail, Mr. Ustazi. What is the background? I want the background of Dr. Hatim. It's a lot of money. Thank you, Dr. Mahmoud Ismail. Really, a mentor for us. He's a lot of things in the love and the love of the knowledge. أنا سعيد أكون وسط مجموعة الأزهر ده شيء يشرفني وأتمنى أن يبقى أوف فاليو تو يو. أي بريزنت ثري كيسز مينلي أي نيد ذا ديسكشن وذ ذيس كيسز وذ يو. يعني فيرست كيس يو سي إت؟ يس. براون تو بلاك كاتاركت إن مثلا 85 ييرز مان سوتو سوليوشن سندروم ليتل بيس أوف فاكودينيسز Not dilatable. This is the maximum dilatation 
I, I think there will be a debate which to do fake or for extra cap or for somewhat else or intra cap. How many people will? Uh, how many people what, yeah, Dr. Uh, like what? what? Do you hear me? Yeah, yeah again the question. Again the question, Dr. Ammar. This case, yes, yeah, so the exfoliation, 85 yeah. years old, the black cataract case. Uh, could you please uh, all of us stop sharing videos, Dr. Abdel Megid, Dr. Mahmoud, and uh, and Dr. Hadim as well? And stop. Okay. Yeah, so please, yeah, because now the no, 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 stop your your uh, video, uh, live video, but you should share the screen because the internet is unstable. Now, now, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. This is 85 years old, so the people with zonular little bit phacodonesis. As you see here, I started by injecting Maluga ring. I am a fan of the Maluga ring to support the iris to prevent narrowing of the pupil intraoperative after soft shell technique should position it. As you will see, you will find the nucleus is moving. The lens is moving while I am moving the Maluga ring. Staining by the special cannula with its opening down. While I move opening the capsule, you see the whole the whole bag is moving. The whole <coughs> is moving. So it is there is a zonular weakness, it adds more difficult to this old man. It is 85 years. I start with my axis. Sure, it must be large axis enough to help you to manipulate the nucleus well without stress on the zonules. Finishing the capsule axis, take your time while doing a case like this. I finish the capsule axis. Hydro dissection is more shots to avo avoid any capsular block syndrome. Trying to manipulate the nucleus. I am extremely afraid. As you see, I, I love the Vidal Conquer. I start to 70 power, increase it to 80 power. By this machine, it is very high power. But here, no, I, I need no stress on the zonules at all. I need a strong ultrasound, a so the exfoliation with weak zonules. I increase it to 90%, which I, in the first case, only to use it in 90% to make large, long, and deep growth. My, my preferred technique is to move, doing what's called extended divide and conquer, to remove the bulk of the nucleus while the nucleus can place, debulking it, making long, large grooves, debulking the nucleus under viscose and soft shell technique so the endothelium is protected making most of energy as you will you see the energy here is i it is 109 efx up till now in fake one but i am away from the uh, of the endothelium i am working in the safe side in the back with endothelial protection with low fluidics low aspiration rate low flow rate vacuum so no removal of the ovd the scoot is attached to the cornea in place you debulk the core nucleus Majority of the part is removed while the nucleus in place. That's why FICO2 will take a little amount of ultrasound. As you see here, starting to divide the nucleus. I used most of ultrasound 160 EFX during FIC1, removing every particle of the nucleus with re-injection of OVD this code many times, I have no financial interest in this code. Emulsifying the quadrants, you will see every quadrant will take a, sh a short amount of ultrasound. I have a wide crater where I can manipulate the nucleus parts, the quadrants, far away from the nuclear, from the cornea. As you see, I push every quadrant area, and to emulsify it by the left hand by fork and spatula. I sorry, what's going on? I divide all particles, making it smaller and smaller. Although it is very hard, weak zonules, but no stress in the zonules. Emulsifying the nucleus. This is the value of large capsular axis. You take every quadrant to the, the middle of the of the of the crater. You created it in FIC1, so you can remove it, clean it slowly, multiply with the nucleus. 
This is the last quadrant. As long as your machine is stable, you are in the safe side. Don't ask the from functions or the circuit or something like this. Doesn't occur. In most cases, satellite lab. As you see, EFX is about 210, and while EFX in FIC1 was 160, so about 50, 50 EFX used in FIC2. FIC1, while you are in the back, before coming out, you might inject OVD to avoid stress on the zonules when collapse occur. There is weak zonules. At this time, I decided to inject CTR to support the, the capsular bag. But after filling the, the capsular bag well, inject the CTR to make support of the bag. The rule, inject CTR as late and safe as possible, okay? Now you can remove the cortex easily with by manual irrigation aspiration cannula, even in the presence of CTR, no problem. Usually things go easy. Clean the cortex. Even with the hardest nucleus, you will find cortex after finishing the nucleus. You must clean the cortex to avoid inflammation and reaction. Don't come out except after injecting this code. Insert IOL in place, and you can now position it single piece, multi piece, as you like. CTR makes the support, so I prefer to put single piece IOL. I use usually uh, hydrophobic acrylic. Now, removal of the malugan ring, you must remove the far one, that is the sub incisional one. Usually two is sufficient, but in this case, I removed the four, the four bolts, uh, just to try and get two usually sufficient. Disengage it and explant, but you must direct it into so its injector. It comes easily, irrigation aspiration, and you'll find everything is okay. Never run away, hydrate the wound even after you finish while AC or while irrigation is maintained. Always have a pressurized eyeball to avoid systolic macular edema and zonular stress. One week post operative, you will find the cornea is crystal clear. Everything is okay. The patient is very happy, also very hard. That's my way in management of rock hard cataracts, which is very common in other regions. This is the second case. Start it, or you want to discuss the first one? Uh, I think we could make it to the far end. Okay, this Dr. is... Dr. Mahmoud, do you agree? Okay, is Dr. Mahmoud is the boss now. I tried to tube slurry polar cataract with, sorry, I started from the first. As you see, this is on the slate lamp. When you find these satellites with posterior polar cataracts, it is definitely tied to posterior polar cataract. You can confirm it by, by ultrasound, by, by my ultrasound, by microscopy, by uh, even anterior segment OCT, to confirm that it is open posterior capsule. My, my, this is the case. The rule in posterior pulled cataract type two is open posterior capsule is making rexis about five millimeter because it is the standby which you will may insert the IOL support. Mini hydrodination, never hydrodissect in any type of posterior pulled cataract or suspected posterior pulled cataract even. You must make hydrodination only, mini a little bit, Remove it, try to remove it in a block with the FECO machine. Don't divide it. Remove the bulk of the nucleus, leaving the nucleus to the end to support the opening. As you will see here, you will find, we will find the posterior capsule opening is present. So before coming out, inject this code before trying to remove the even nucleus to prevent vitreous prolapse. Removing the even nucleus, as you see, this logic, all parts. Sometimes you use a spatula, as you will see here, to manipulate the parts from by your left hand. Now, I introduce plant spatula to manipulate the even nucleus, being aspirate it, take care of the circular capsule is open. We know this. Don't come out, inject OVD. This code by name is the best one, or methyl cellulose, something dispersive to prevent vitreous prolapse. 
Now I will convert the posterior opening into posterior capsular axis, trying to implant the IOL in the back. You are trimming the edge. I, I, I prefer the micro axis forceps in all my maneuvers, even in the right cataract. Where now with sweeping spatula, I find there is a vitreous, as you see. It is there is a vitreous. So vitrectomy, I decide to do vitrectomy. To remove the anterior vitreous, never allow vitreous strands to be present. Before coming out after vitrectomy, inject this versive OVD, as you see. Here the decision is changing to plant multi piece IOL in the sulcus with optic capture to support it in the anterior axis. And here it is captured, as you see. Ensure it is captured. So it is will be stable, no, no, no possibility of UGH syndrome or something like that. Even never run away, inject, hydrate before coming out. Always keep the eyeball pressurizing to avoid any vitreous loss even after finishing the case. My last case, this case of black cataract, about Egyptian cataract, as you know, this code, soft shell technique, hidden behind this code, I have no financial interest, staining of the anterior capsule, capsular excess, routine steps, hydrosection, and started my FACO, divide and conquer. Debulking the nucleus after division of it, rotation, removing one half of the nucleus, starting FACO2, removing the part of the nucleus, all of a sudden. There is a very wide opening in the posterior capsule. How can I deal this? Dr. Muhammad Mahdi presented many nice cases about dealing with it. This is another, another way of dealing. There are many ways of dealing with the complications, but the same applies for the same rules. Don't run away, inject this very viscoelastic. I prepare this code by name. It's really a fantastic tool. Inject more and more from the main and side ports. Then evaluate the opening. In this case, I find, as you see, there is a very large opening here in the pattern area, in the area where I will manipulate. It, it is difficult to do, sorry. Okay. It is difficult to do fake emulsification in this condition. You will lose fragments into the vitreous and will call for your vitreous colleague, which all of us dislike it. We want to finish the operation at the same time. My decision here is to retrieve the half of the nucleus, this very hard cataract, into the anterior chamber. Then <clears throat> position it safely in front of the iris. Inject OVD behind it to push, push the anterior vitreous face. Up till now, no vitreous loss, as you see. Then use the multi-piece IOL as a scaffold IOL. Using the scaffold I, 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 technique, which is uh, uh, belong to Ammar Agrawali from India, Ammar and Hatim Ammar, no relation. Putting the IOL underneath, in front of the iris, but behind the half of the nucleus. Take your time to position it well. It must be in the anterior chamber, multi piece, not single piece in this condition. Position the nucleus in front of it, then recenter the IOL. This part not edited to give the idea to the who is listening, to learn from it, position the IOL in place. It takes some time, don't worry. Now I will shift to anterior chamber fecal emulsification with a slower parameters. Instead of 500 as was here, it now I am 350, flow rate is reduced, and vacuum is reduced, and inject OVD from time to time to coat the endothelium, to protect it. So you see here, you multiply the half of the nucleus, although it's hard, it can be finished safely. Hoping, inshallah. You must be slow Sorry, yeah. in this Sorry, condition. In this maneuver, you must be slow. Take your time. 
because to allow time for aspiration of the particles without aspiration of the of the viscoelastic. You can inject this code many times. You may lose, you, you may lose one or two ampoules, but you will save your coronaries and the patient cornea. Sure. If you still have it. <laughs> no, no, no. You will find it post operative, immediate post operative. Yeah. And cornea is well sent to Dr. Mahmoud. I mean, the coronary is not the viscoelastic. It's a very novel idea, Dr. Ammar al-Hayyah. It's a very novel idea, Dr. Ammar al-Hayyah. So, oh. after finishing the removal of the nucleus, I inject, here is adrenaline to dilate the pupil to see well to reposition the eye well in the sulcus. I manipulate the haptic slowly, one haptic in front of the capsular axis. It must be by manually manipulated by two hands. The other one is directed easily. You must ensure its position in, in, and centration. Now, as you see, there is some lens matter behind the eye wave. Now I go with the cutter, not the, the, the irrigation aspiration. The cutter, I can use it as IA cut or cut IA. Here I manipulate it. Here I am removing the vitreous. But when going to aspirate some lens matter, I shift into what's called IA cut. Aspiration only without cutting. Then it, you can change the modulations. IA cut, cut IA to remove the lens matter, the vitreous if it comes, and well positioned IA well in place, never hydrate the wound with continuous irrigation, and always the eye will must be pressurized. Change your hands, eyeball is pressurized. I inject air here in this condition, in this case, for photography second day. As you will see, case is finished safely, but waiting for two more. Tomorrow, you will see cornea is a clear, crystal clear cornea, air is still present. Not one week, it is one, just one day. You can finish the case safely, even with very large pharmaceutical rupture, very hard nucleus, but making use of your tools. And thank you very much for this kind invitation and waiting for your comments. Excellent, Dr. Hatim Basha. Thank uh, you. Now it is uh, Dr. Mohammed Khidsh. He is a talented, uh, gifted one in cataract surgery. He is our hero now. Welcome, Dr. Khadr. Okay, to Muhammad. Shokran. Fadl. Thank you. I didn't show you the things. Shokran, Muhammad. We're going to get it. Let's do the presentation. Presentation. Okay, Sorry. We are old now, so this technology is not ours. Okay, go ahead. Yes, I know. <laughs> دكتور محمد خضر ده سينيور بتاعي ويعني من الناس اللي دايما بنحبه قوي دايما بنتعلم منه بنحب نزق منه الفكره في العمليات ربنا يخليك يا ابو حميد ده من ذوقك حبيب اوكي كله كده باين ولا اوكي دو دبل كليك يا محمد اي اوكي يو سي Full screen. 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 Full Uh, one case congenital, ectopia lentis, and the other case traumatic uh, cataractus lens. Uh, the first case, uh, male patient, eight years old, he came to the clinic to change his glasses. All refraction were minus 16 diopter. After mediasis and cycloplegic, the lens showed 100 degree subluxation 
and picture of spherophakia. This is the right eye, and the other is the left eye. Uh, I planned my plan, the another case of traumatic cataract, iatrogenic. Uh, this is uh, congenital ectopia lentis. Firstly, uh, I decided to do lensectomy. The patient was uh, has refraction minus 16 diopter. Uh, Post-operative will be plus 2, plus 2.5. Uh, but this is a sur surprise. After biometry, I find that uh, I found the uh, the biometry IOL power calculation plus 18 diopter. Uh, plus 18 diopter, I changed the, the decision immediately, and I will go to you. Uh, we must implant the IOL. Uh, in this case. Uh, in, in case of subluxation, more than 180 degree and part here. Uh, I lost two main advantages for to complete the surgery in this case. The first one, I can't stain the anterior capsule. I can't stain the anterior capsule, number one. Number two, the counter-traction, counter-traction of the zonular, the neules, intact the neules, I lost it also. I start two side ports as usual. Main, main incision, main incision after injection of cohesive viscoelastic. And the start puncture of the anterior capsule <coughs> by cystome. I can do it by the rexes, and I complete the rexes in sharing technique. Traction, the traction meridia perpendicular to the leading edge. Completed very carefully, steady, and very slowly. The area of the capsule and the sub-incisional sub area I take it by sharing techniques. After, after completing the rexes or before, we must leave at least two millimeter of the anterior capsular gap from the equator to implant the CTR. Also the centration of the, of the capsular rexes uh, not obey or not coincide with the optical zone of the of the cornea. After completing the rexes, hydrodissection of the old cortical material, hydrodissection, good hydrodissection to avoid traction on the zonules, the intact zonules. An irrigation aspiration, post cannula are inside the bag, not outside. Irrigation also inside the bag to avoid vitreal hydration, and we may do vitreal prolapse, how induce vitreal pro prolapse. During hydrodissection, during irrigation, irrigation aspiration, we must focus on the subcapsular cortical material. Subcapsular cortical material it wash out all the cortex in the bag, inside the bag. Replace irrigation aspiration cannula. Also all the, the procedure, you are inside the bag, not in the anterior chamber. Okay, cleaning it completely. Inject also, after completing the uh, uh, clear, clearing up of the cortical material, <clears throat> inject cohesive viscoelastic material, not dispersive, to maintain the capsular bag inflated.
filling the, the bag with viscoelastic, cohesive viscoelastic, and you are manually implant the CTR. Slowly and gently rotating the uh, CTR to avoid damage of another intact zinules. It is very important to implant the ring circular and centrally in the back and then implant the IOL after implanting the CTR. I think the IOL is more or less centralized and the patient post-operative well and good resume a visual equity, very good visual equity. So, yes, it is highly there's very good uh, centration or uh, centration of the IOL. Okay. Then hydrate the main incision and washing the viscoelastic. This is the first case. The exceeded cataract lens. I saw the patient preoperative and evaluated here in the lower part the lens chamber. The main aim to keep keep the area of zonular dialysis as it is not increased or extended to the nearby intact zinules. Firstly, the uh, main incision and two side ports do exist also without stain to avoid escape of stain in the vitreous uh, part and go retrolental impair good visualization during the technique. Do re complete rexes. Hydro dissection Gently hydro dissection. Then trying to. The timing of implantation of capsule tension ring here is mandatory. You must implant the. I'm asking all to stop getting any manipulation inside uh, the, the uh, glue because the to protect unstable. the uh, subluxated uh, zonular area. What? No, go what ahead. Yeah, no, go, ahead, go ahead. The internet is going slow, so I'm asking all our. Uh, colleagues to yeah, stop with you, accept you. Go ahead, you, no, complete. You are the one who's allowed. A net fossil vein. A net taifa. We are waiting, don't worry. Yes, okay. Dr. Hatim Ammar, I'll finish the whole Okay, Mohamed. <laughs> Implanting the CDR immediately after hydro dissection to protect the area of zonular dialysis to to prevent more extension of the zonular dehesis area. <clears throat> Very easily implanted, manually implanted CTR. Okay, the CTR inside the equator and the starting FECO. Notes here, the, the, the lower part at six o'clock area, the 
uh, capsular, the, the edge of the capsule come with the FECO with ineffective FECO power or FECO aspiration. I will do in a vitrectomy, anterior vitrectomy at this area. Once needed to do vitrectomy, I will do it even three or four times through all, all through the operation. Because any vitreal traction more disturbance of the zonular intex than yours. After vitrectomy, we remove the AB, the, the, the cortical material. It comes easily. We are doing another vitrectomy. Now the cortical material will come very easily than before. The cortical material away from the, the CTR, it comes easily. It comes e easier, more the area supported by the CTR. It's very difficult to uh, make traction, more traction on this area. And it will not come easily. I think to inject viscoelastic material behind the cortical material between the posterior capsule and the cortex and premature implantation of IOL. Implanting the IOL between the cortex and the posterior capsule. Here, the IOL make a scaffold to put the irrigation or aspiration cannula or protecting the posterior capsule. I will go to buy the irrigation aspiration cannula This is retrograde aspiration of the cortex. Presence of it comes here we saw the line of traction on the cortex the traction on the cortex will parallel to the equator not perpendicular to the equator to avoid traction I will stress on the intact the nodes. the cortex cleared washed out, no vitreous in the anterior chamber, and inject air to support the, the lens. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed. Thank you, Dr. Khedr. Things that are very difficult. We always learn from you, Dr. Khedr. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Khedr. دلوقتي ات از تيرن اوف اي ثينك دكتور طارق بدوي طارق مجيد وبعدين حضرتك وبعدين دكتور ايمن صلاح ايمن صلاح اخر واحد ماشي اتفضل دكتور طارق بيه دكتور طارق بدوي ام ميوت هيم هي از ميوتد المفروض بيسمعنا ام ميوت هيم بليز انا اي اي دو ام ميوت دكتور طارق بدوي دكتور طارق دكتور طارق بدوي ستيل ميوت هو ستيل ميوت طب استناني استناني يا فندم جيب اوكي انا ايم ميوت اتفضل اوكي خلاص تمام كل سنه وانتم طيبين 
كل ساعه حضرتك سيد الدكتور طارق اتفضل الولد اللي خد بس السؤال الدكتور الملاح لان اي ميد ذيس بوينت وير يو يوزنج فيسكو كوهيسيف اور ديسبيرسيف فيسكولاستيك اول ذا تايم ديسبيرسيف ديسبيرسيف يا ديسبيرسيف اوكي بص دكتور طارق دكتور طارق استاذنك نكمل لان الاسئله كلها متداخله لان احنا واخدين موضوعات متداخله فنخليها كلها على بعضها عشان الناس تقعد اللي عايز يسمع ديسكشن بين يعني احنا قفلنا الروم عشان البازل كان بيحصل من الناس طيب انا محتاج اعمل سكرين شيت من تحت هتلاقي في بطن صغير في ارو جري محتاج محتاج ال اوكي بيدي هوست ياخد اكسل هوست طب عملت دكتور عبد المجيد؟ لا اعملها حضرتك طيب لحظه واحده ميك ات كو هوست اوكي ناو يو ار كو هوست دكتور طارق يو كان شير اوكي طيب نفتح تاني السكرين شير رايت اتفضل اوكي بس اوكي تمام يا دكتور طارق اتفضل طيب انا هذا اقول ان one of the annoying nightmares during thicko emulsification is implanting a defective uh, IOL which in its state its removal and this again will jeopardize the ocular structures like the iris, the cornea and the capsule so in this presentation I will show what happened when such event was made. Okay, let's start the video. As you see here. Yeah, and that was the first Okay, you can see that uh, torn capsule, torn haptic. So I had either to uh, bisect the, 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 uh, the lens and try to extract it. Uh, and this means you produce a cornea, the, cap the iris, and most importantly, the capsule. So uh, I decided to do something else. I decided to, to implant a um, foldable IOL just behind or below this, this defective IOL, working as a scaffold uh, to, to uh, guard against any injury for the capsule. Okay. And you, as you see, there was a problem while I was trying to inject the second IOL. It was stuck. So I tried to use a second instrument to facilitate its delivery. And as you see, there was a problem here. It was stucking and I, I couldn't actually do anything. It jumped all of a sudden inside again the bag, but Unfortunately, I had another torn, <laughs> torn haptic. haptic. Now I'm in a bad situation. <clears throat> so I decided to proceed with implanting the first one and we'll see what's going on now. So uh, I uh, bisected the IOL and uh, complete halves. As you see here, and complete halves, they will be separated. The two halves will be separated completely. And this is really is not a good, good technique, as you will see now in a moment. So um, I'm protecting, the, of course, the capsule with the second eye well. And now I'm bisecting the two halves, the, the eye well in two halves. Do you have so a special I, scissor or are you using the vitreoretin one? Uh, so I actually, I was using a, a vanus at that time. I, I didn't have the proper instrument you know, for that. Yeah. And um, as you see, I injured, I had some tissue injury, of course, because if you are bisecting them, both of them and uh, bisecting the lens in halves and extracted this way, you may get some injury for the tissues. But I still have a an IOL was torn haptic in the eye. So I have to repeat my maneuver again. But again, I'm going to present, uh, to, this time I'm going to inject without um, 
a cartridge and injector because I think the problem with the cartridge and injector. Yes, but sometimes you get bad ones. So you get much situation. So I again in, in the planted one behind the capsule, uh, behind the the injector one in the bag as, as I'm trying to position it properly in the bag, as you see here. And now I'm going to bisect it in a different technique, which will be much better, will save a lot of uh, tissues. I will, I will do the bisection very close to the root of the haptic, as you see here. Very close to the root of the haptic, okay? And I'm not going, I'm not going to complete the cut and make them two separate halves. I'll leave an attachment. Then I will pull the, eye, the, the lens from the haptic, not away from it. Then, of course, I use another, some other instrument to facilitate that. They will come in one movement. I don't have to insert my forceps twice. And this, as you see, protected my eyes. It didn't happen like before. Okay, now I'm, of course, washing the viscoelastic and securing the wound because it was a little bit larger. I don't have to put any um, suture. The wound was tight, it was beveled and tight to stab the wound. And that's it. This is the first case. So what I uh, emphasize here that I'm uh, I'm using as uh, the the the, uh, the the other and second uh, IOL putting it behind behind the the first torn one to protect the capsule and when I divide I will divide uh, the, the technique that I showed which will save you a lot of effort and will save the tissues as well and um, can I can I go to the second presentation? Go ahead. Of course. You are live. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> but actually, I didn't lose the eye and didn't lose the patient. Okay. And of course, I, I, I saved my image as well. <laughs> Go ahead with the next case. Okay. The next one I will show you, uh, which is, yes, the implantation on. Did I make a screen sharing? You have to. I, I didn't. Okay, just a moment. Yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. Let me do screen sharing. Just a moment, please. Again. Uh, I'll do screen sharing. It's not started yet. In a moment, please. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, 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 sorry. Uh, a lot of stuff coming out now. <laughs> Don't say project. Uh, after. You have to, again, to have to admit me to, to admit the... Uh, no, you are, you are ready. I'm ready, yeah. You, you, can, you can share. Am I on now? You are, not, you are available and you are a co-host and you can share. Can share. Okay. Yeah. Share your screen oh, first. Oh, screen. Share screen. Share. Yeah, from the green button. Yes, I did. I did. I'm sorry. There's something wrong here. Okay. okay. Now it comes. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. No. This screen sharing has stopped. Uh, I don't. Know. Let me do that again. Do, but just do once. Okay, let me do, uh, I'll start the, the video first. And uh, wait for it. And, and then I'll do screen sharing after that. All right. Maybe the internet is... Uh... Yes, I think I'll, I'll be okay now. Just wait for it. Now the video is ready. You can go ahead. Ready? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. So, in, in, in the cases that you presented before, Mohammed and uh, Professor uh, uh, 
also presented was uh, showing a case in cases in which uh, the capsule was, to, was opened and you did some uh, vitrectomy and then you inserted an anterior chamber, uh, sorry, as, as clear fixation, um, um, a sulcus fixation IOL. Am I right? No um, sclera fixation, nobody's fixed the sclera fixation yet. No, no, I'm sorry, I'm saying, uh, uh, sulcus fix, uh, sulcus. Yeah, yeah. sulcus. Yeah. So, in this uh, case, I had a small pupil, so I had, I had to use the, the dilators, the, uh, the pupil of the dilators, and we had a, uh, a torn capsule and uh, vitreous loss, so we did anterior vitrectomy and some of the nuclei, just uh, some of the cortex and hard nucleus escaped, so, so I used also the vitrectomy. And if you see, I was doing anterior vitrectomy. And of course, I, I used the, the trampsin alone to facilitate viewing the vitreous. I cleaned that through the, uh, okay, anteriorly. I removed the, 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 the remnant the cortex and cleaned the capsule as well. But I don't, I, I think I have to enlarge this one. No, it's, it's, it's okay, go ahead. Okay. But I still have, you know, a tear here in Busu capsule, so I have to make it rounded as much as you can as much as I can to uh, prevent it from extending. So I did that. And I tried to implant the, the lens inside the, the bag. I used a posterior support from this, the sclerotomy, a posterior support to prevent the pressure of the, of the lens on the capsule, posterior capsule, which may lead to rupture of the busy capsule and drop of the IOL. So I use that as a lever to prevent that lens from escaping behind and to, to make sure that I'm inserting the lens, the haptics and the optics in the right position inside the, uh, and as, I see, as you see, I'm, I'm uh, rotating it, I'm dialing it, and it was in a proper uh, position. And I didn't have to to dilate, uh, sorry, the opening or something like that, the uh, main incision. Now, this is one case. The other cases are, are similar to that. So uh, because of the time of the audience, I have to stop now. And um, I think this is enough. I don't have to show you the other cases that are similar. And there is one of them using a multi-focal IOL giving you the impression that we can do that precisely without a rotation. This is not the multifocal IOL. The last presentation. So you put the, the IOL multi. in the bag? Yes, 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 in the bag. This is the one. You used the, uh, the dialer as a scaffold, Yes, right? as a scaffold. Yeah. Scaffold. And this is the presentation. Uh, I know this is too late for the, for the audience to, uh, to pay us for, for a long time. So uh, I hope this is, was useful. Um, Thank you very much, Dr. Tarek. Thank you very much. Can I ask Dr. Mohammed as, uh, as a, uh, a question as well? All right. Thank we you will go to this 15 minutes of continuous discussion. It will Thank be videos. And cool Happy Ramadan. Happy Ramadan. Okay. Happy Ramadan. أهلا وسهلا بالجميع سعداء بحضراتكم دكتور عبد المجيد ناجي الدين استاذ في جامعه الازهر هو بروفيسور في سرمولوجي الازهر يونيفرستي هو مالتي تالنتد سيرجن انتير سيجمنت اوكل بلاستيك لاكريمال هي هاز ا لوت اوف ثينكس تو دو بس توداي وي نيد اونلي ذيس بارت نو نو اونلي 3 طيب تمام حضراتكم شايفين الشير سكرين بتاعي ميك ات بلاك طيب هو طبعا يعني ايه حضراتكم دخلتونا في مالتيبل هارت اتاكس بالحالات الصعبه اللي انتم عملتوها تسمحوا لي اخفف حده الموضوع شويه على اساس ان احنا بنشتغل بنصلح حاجه اوريدي البيشنت عارف انها مال فانكشنينج معاه الحاله الاولانيه استاذن حضراتكم اعمل فول سكرين ريبوزيشن اوف سبلاكسيتد اولد انسرتد اي او ال الحاله ديت 
female patient, 37 years old, underwent a complicated extracapsular cataract extraction uh, and IOL implantation three years before the presentation to my clinic, complaining of uniocular diplopia and the defective vision, uncorrected visual acne was 460, refraction was plus 11 with minus 3.75 astigmatism, corrected to 618 with diplopia. Okay. This is the image of dilated uh, pupil of the patient. As we see, the central part of the pupil is almost aphic, uh, and the lower part is phacic, so there is the cause uh, of uniocular diplopia. So, uh, what is the plan? Either extraction and scleral fixation, I will, but carry many hazards. And I'm the lower uh, haptic of the IOL, I don't know where it sits. And I don't know whether it is freely mobile or adherent, and to wear it adherent, adherent to cellular body, adherent to retina, adherent to blood vessel. So the extraction carry hazard of cellular body detachment, retinal detachment, or even intraocular hemorrhage, and even loss of the eye. You know, well, when you have something like that, maybe the scenario will change. Or the other idea, try to reverse it, or that we. try to, as much as we can, uh, make the optic of the IOL uh, uh, inside the optical zone or optical axis of the eye, okay? This is the video. هنا بحاول بقدر الإمكان أعمل assessment whether the IOL is free mobile or not. بعمل بريشر كده على السكيلات اشوف العدسه هتتحرك معايا ممكن يحصل لها تلد او حاجه زي كده ببدا اعمل هنا سايد بورت سايد بورت دوت منه هعمل انجكشن اوف فيسكو اليستيك اند تراي تو مانيبيليت الاي او البلان هنا uh, ان انا لو لقيت العدسه مش هتتحرك هحاول اعمل لها 1 بوينت سكيل فيكسيشن and pulling the IOL as much I can, as much as I can gently. Okay. Taban, I fashion a scleral bucket here, as you see. Uh, and I couldn't planning with our in Nana Munkin Amil one point scleral fixation. I think it and I couldn't have the Maya pair back and pull with a double straight needle. Hena had a 25 gauge syringe. من البوكت اللي انا عامله انا هنا طبعا بحل الفيسكو اهو بحاول اعمل المانيبيليشن للاي او ال بحاول اشدها اشوفها فري موبايل اور نوت ات از نوت فري موبايل اوكي اي كانت دايل ات اي كانت اكسبلانت ات اوكي سوري As we see, I enter the globe under the bucket with the 25 gauge needle, insulin needle. But if I let me, when I enter in the area, that I try to put the needle in the plan of the first one, below the level of the haptic. Okay? Here, I enter below the level of the haptic to add it between the haptic and the optic, pass between the haptic and the optic. And on the other side, from the side board that I am doing, I enter the straight needle of her back. And milking it into the 25 gauge needle. I'll try to be uh, fast as much as I can. No, take your time. Don't take your time. Just, uh, uh, take your time. Uh, Okay. 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 عندك في فولدر افتحه لوحده. اوكي. 
وقايل ان الباور بوينت بريزنتيشن نوت ريسبوندنج ات اول خلاص اطلع اه ما خلص افتح الفيديو من من السيفنت اوكي يا باشا في لوند ميديا بلاير في اثر هابتك ذا اذر نيدل اوكي سوري بس بعدي الليفل بتاع السيرنج المره دي ان فرونت اوف ذا هابتك اوف ذا ايول اوكي This is the second dinner come out. As we see here, I I I I I did gen, uh, gentle pulling on the haptic. I looped it with the needle, okay. And here comes uh, comes centrally the optic of eye. As you as you see, you see it. You copy. واضح معايا الصورة؟ واضح واضح استاذ بتاعته وطبعا at the end of the operation I injected my cool هنشوف asymmetrical narrowing of the pupil دلوقتي ولكن كانت الحالة post operatively unaided 618 corrected by plus 2 minus 2.5 to 612 and the patient went very happy من غير ما اضطر ان انا اعمل extraction لل IOL واخش مشكلة ممكن تبقى مع يعني ما اقدرش اعالجها ايه ذا تايم عندنا uh, الحاله الثانيه برضو حاله بسيطه جدا بس ديت allow me to discuss with each other in such a case هو العنوان ممكن يكون غريب شويه يعني لما نسمع كلمه شايف السكرين واضحه دلوقتي تطلع منها؟ اه اتفضل اتفضل طيب لما, لما نقول بروجريسيف بوست اوبراتيف اور بوست فيكو هايبرميتروبيا How can we seek in uh, such condition? Mungkin discussion? Tfadl, uh, we have Dr. Ayman Bas. I have a question for you. When I tell you that I have a case, which one is female, 55 years old, not diabetic, not hypertension, not, not hypertensive, uh, had myopia of minus 18 diopter. She underwent scleral buckling for rheumatogenous retinal attachment 10 years ago. She had an uneven for phaco surgery with the in-bag IOL implantation, planned to have post-operative mild myopia for reading, post-operative visual acuity was 6-9, aided with minus 2 diopter, uh, spherical equivalent. The uh, uh, came back the two weeks post-operative, okay? Uh, she was unable to read easily without glasses and accepted to have distant correction. Three weeks later, she came to complain uh, that she started to find difficulty in reading. Refraction was minus 0.5 diopter instead of two minus two diopter. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, you mean that immediately post operative it was about 0.5? No, yeah. immediate post operative was minus two diopter, and I consult, I, I counseling the patient, I was counseling the yeah. patient to read easily. And they have uh, distant glasses, okay? okay. And she accepted. We طلع فعلا كت تقريبا minus ten, بس بعد أسبوعين بالضبط تحولت ل minus zero point five. وبدأت تشتكي من difficulty in reading بعد أسبوعين أو ثلاثة من ال من العملية يعني بعد شهر من العملية. أو ال أو refraction minus two كان بعد أسبوعين وبعدها بأسبوعين بقت minus zero point five, okay? Okay. Um. Fundus examination was normal via narrow pupil. So new glasses are prescribed. How can we think in such in such case? What did you remove? Did you remove completely the viscoelastic by the end of the surgery? If I didn't remove it, yeah, yeah. I mean, refractive surprise can have immediate postoperative. Uh, because the 
the parameter to be changed here is the, the positioning of the lens, the depth of the anterior chamber, and if there is any remaining viscoelastic. Otherwise, you don't have any extra cause except this. If if you could agree with me, Doctor Hatem. No, I'm not. I'm not thinking. I'm not thinking. Doctor Hatem, please. Doctor Hatem, I'm not thinking. Maybe we can think of another thing. Sometimes accumulation of fluid behind the eye. You mean trap? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Some sort of late capsular block. Late capsular block. Five years. Yes, sometimes this okay. Dilation. I'm not dilation of pupil and check on that lamp. You will find that if you find a behind it and dilation, it may be the case. All these, all these thoughts came to my mind, but the fact that I said it was clear. You بعد ست اسابيع من العمليه كيم كومبلينج اوف بلرد ديستنت اند نير فيجن ريفراكشن ووز بلس 5 سبيرشال اكلوزن هاو ديد كمز اي دونت نو اكزاكتلي وير از ذا كوز ذيس بروجريسيف هايبروبيا ذيس كيس از بوكل رايت هاف دايوبتر ذن بلس 5 سبيرشال اكلوزن دكتور عبد المجيد ذيس كيس ووز بوكل فور ريت اتاتشمنت رايت نعم This case underwent buckling procedure for retinal attachment earlier. 10 years, okay, successful buckling. Yeah. No, this is stable. Old. Nothing changed yet. Yes. And it was an eventful surgery. Yes. And you could say that you removed all the viscoelastic. Yes. There's no evidence that there's a but collection. There is, there is something I didn't do. What? Dilatation of the pupil. Dilatation of the pupil? This I, is I, dilated examination of the patient. See? Yeah, what was there? Oh, capsular phimosis? Anterior capsular contraction syndrome or capsular so, phimosis syndrome? Yeah. So I mean changes in the anterior chamber depth and the position of the lens relate, okay. relative okay. to okay. the cornea. Yeah. El, el, el idea here, el idea here, uh, in the Ayana within six weeks, uh, that it's seven diopters. Yeah, this means that the lens was bowed posteriorly. I mean that the lens posteriorly, co 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 yeah. co uh, convex posteriorly. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. of course. Yeah. So the far is uh, the, the focus of the lens comes behind the eye. That's good. But can you plan here? The plan here, I mean, I asked some of our professors after I did the solution. So I I had a case and I uh, I opened the IC once again and come with a vanilla scissor to cut. The anterior capsule. No. Yes, Doctor. Do you want to say something? Yeah, I would do uh, YAG. Uh, you have a laser. You have YAG laser. You could do release incision with the YAG. Would that cause something? احنا هو هو كلام سليم طبعا مية في المية. قبل ما نتكلم هنشوف بس الاتيولوجي أو الديسبوزين فاكتور بتاعت الكابسول الفايموز السندروم. نارو ريكسس. You have a solid capsule. نعم. You have something specific for this case to talk about? Yes. What uh, was it? Narrow uh, remaining subcapsular epithelium, myopia, previous intraocular uh, surgery, especially retina, especially the excitation, regular retinal pigment epithelium uh, distortion, or ocular trauma. <laughs> لا انا كنت بتكلم ان هو فكره انه يدخل سيرجيكال ما يعملش يا جايز خوفا من الريتينال تير انه انت والله يو هاف عارف حضرتك عارف حضرتك يا دكتور حاتم يو ار دوينج ياج انتير كابسولوتومي بس لو رجعنا الصوره هتلاقي البوستيرو كابسول اوبيك اوكي البروبلم از كامينج فروم ذا انتير كابسولار فايموزس مفيش مشاكل Yeah. Yeah, في ناس بت... في ناس بتتكلم ان انا ادخل واعمل كاتنج ليها بسيزور او ايفن بكاتر واكملها انا ما بخافش يحصل اكستنشن في ناس بتتكلم عن هذا الكلام في 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 نقطه يا دكتور حاتم في نقطه يا دكتور حاتم الكابسول فايموز السندروم على حسب السيفيريتي بتاعته على حسب السيفيريتي بتاعته مشكله الحاله دي انها بروجريسد فيري رابيدلي احنا احنا لازم لازم نخش بالياج مش نخش باي سيزر ولا فانس ولا حاجه ليه؟ لان الرابيد بروجريسيف كابسول فايموز سندروم كاري هازارد اوف زونيولار ديفكتس اند ديهيزنس البروفيسور اللي كنت بكلمه في الموضوع ده بعد ما عرضت عليه الحاله قال فعلا كان عندي حاله وانا داخل بعملها بالسيزر الاي او ال ام باك دروبت 
مش بتحصل كومبليت زونيولار ديهيزنس الحاجه الظريفه في الموضوع انت عارف يا دكتور منى ان احنا بنبص على الحاله في اوضه بناخدها في الاوضه الثانيه بنعمل لها هي جليزر على طول جاست ان انا ترانسميت فروم روم روم تو روم الريفراكشن بتاعها اتحسن حوالي يعني بقى تقريبا بلس 1.25 دايوبتر سفيريكال ايكوفلنت طب ليه ما رجعتش للنورمال؟ ايوه قلة تو بي ستريتش ده سؤال هي رجعت حصل لها فوق هي انفولدنج تاني بعد ما كانت فولدد بوستيرولي بس ليه ليه الفكره ان احنا ما رجعناش تاني للمايوبك ريفراكشن اللي كان موجود بوست اوبراتيف بعد ما عملت الياك <تصفيق> طيب في حد يحب يضيف حاجه في الحاله دي دكتور حاتم او دكتور طارق عشان عايزين الدكتور ايمن يبتدي I was asking that, that uh, is it possible that the pathology is pushing the, the lens something like two millimeters back to give you such seven seven on the doctors or something هو الحل المنطقي قوي الحل المنطقي ان انا مهما عملت ياج ليزر في الانتيرو كابسول I, I didn't I can't reach the extreme equator فهيفضل عندك جزء من الايكويتور فايبروز بس الميزه ان احنا السيركلر كونسنتريك كونتراكشن اوف ذا كابسولار فايبرز كت خلاص البروجريشن وقف هي تفضل الحاله ستيشنري على كده وانت منعت الفيرزر كومبليكيشن اللي ممكن تحصل من ان يحصل سيلياري بادي ديتاتشمنت او زونيولار ديهيزنس ممكن تلاقي العدسه كومبليتلي على الريتم في حالات انا شفتها كانت برضو دي, دي غالبا دي بشوفها دايما بعد حالات الريتن اتاتشمنت سيرجري انا شفت حاله لو بصينا عليها بعد بالظبط شهرين من العمليه اكنك بتبص على حاله وايت كاتراك الانتيرو كابسول كومبليتلي كلوز ما فيش حتى سنترال هول كومبليتلي كلوز هنستاذنكم 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 نعمل جنب الدسكشن لحد دكتور ايمن ابلود هيز برزنتيشن بعد اذنكم عشان ايه في اوكي لاست سلايد لاست سلايد يا دكتور مهدي بس تو ريموف ذا ساب كابسول ابيسيليان ريليز انسيجن ان كيسز اوف نارو ريكسس شود بي اكسبكتد ان سيرتن كيسز از وي ديسكاف دونت هيزيتيت ان مانجمنت ثانك يو دكتور عبد المجيد ات واز نايس برزنتيشن دكتور ايمن صلاح دكتور ايمن صلاح تشيف اكزيكيوتيف اوفيسرز اوف ذا اير Egypt Air Health Services. He is going to tell us about the last topic in our session, femto cataract surgery. Father Dr. Ayman. Thank you, Muhammad, for this uh, uh, nice uh, uh, gathering. Uh, Ramadan Kareem, I hope everyone is. As Agnak, I've been with you. I know. We've taken a lot of time. 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 لا خالص لا خالص موست ويلكم اتس ماي بليجر دايما يعني ربنا يكرمك الله يكرمك طبعا وي هاف اتفضل شير يور سكرين بليز اوكي تمام اللي عنده كلب يسكت بقى ثانك يو سو ماتش اجين فور انفايتنج مي فور ذس سيمبوزيوم Uh, Ramadan Kareem, and thanks for the technology and Corona lockdown that uh, allowed us to just to use this facility. I hope it, uh, this will not continue and we recover soon from the uh, pandemic, inshallah. Uh, after the, all the, what we have seen today from very uh, skillful surgeons and very complicated techniques. Did you uh, share their screen? Yes. No, this is not yet. Is it or no? No. It sure. Uh, you just click once and wait for it. You know. Okay. On the oh, green. Disabled. What? Uh, disabled. Disabled. Oh, okay. It's just oh. a moment. I will. Uh, uh, I mean, Salah. No. Into. Have you? Oh, okay. Uh, you. You was okay. Now you can do. Okay. Okay. Now you can. Fadl. Okay. Go ahead. You okay now? Now we can go. Perfect. Uh, after all what you have uh, seen from uh, the very interesting cases from a very uh, skillful surgeons uh, with the uh, hard uh, taking uh, techniques and uh, difficulties, let's uh, move to uh, our, let's have a break and try to look 
uh, for something that lighter that can save our uh, day, uh, our lives one day. Uh, we are talk today about Femto. Can Femto cataract save your day? Uh, the introduction of Femto assisted cataract of legs caused definitely a paradigm shift in the world of cataract surgery. Uh, nowadays, cataract surgery is considered as a refractive uh, surgery, uh, and the expectations of the patients are extremely high. Uh, this is just a reminder of the uh, idea of Femto uh, laser. It's, 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 it, the three steps of Femto disruption is plasma expansion. Uh, shock wave pressure, cavitation bubble creation, decreased pulse duration, reduced uh, photo disruption uh, threshold, and allowing uh, closer placement of pulses. And thanks for the lead, uh, uh, Dr. Zouil. Allah Arham. There may, are many advantages over conventional uh, FACO, that multi uh, planar self sealing incision creation, precise uh, circularity, uh, centration, and adjustability of capsular access uh, mm -hmm. diameter or capsulotomy. Uh, lens nuclear fragmentation, arc with keratotomy uh, is an option with this technique. Uh, we have the, uh, uh, the ability to do a precise centration, thus uh, uh, avoiding uh, IOL decentration and uh, 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 reaching the effective lens position perfectly. No IOL tilt, adjustable diameter, as, as, uh, as long as you can just adjust the diameter of your uh, capsular axis with the machine. Uh, no capsular exit extension or minimal. All of above mentioned points are particularly important in the multifocal and toric IOLs to achieve the best uh, possible visual outcome for the patient, as we said before. This is simply a very famous uh, uh, slide by Dr. David Chang uh, showing the difference between laser uh, manual capsular exit and laser capsulotomy uh, uh, regarding the shape and the centration. Uh, uh, of the IOL afterward. Definitely, uh, uh, using femto laser uh, cataract extraction has less damage to endothelium, especially in patients with compromised endothelium, like uh, Fox endothelial dystrophy, easier fragmentation and division into halves, quadrants, or whatever, sixths, or whatever uh, technique you want, circular that you have according to your machine. I'm going to share some uh, of my videos. Uh, today, with uh, I'm, I'm, I'm almost shifting to 50% of my cataract surgery into femto nowadays, which is now weird uh, in, in, in this uh, economic status, but I still love this technique. I find it very helpful and very useful, and it's definitely a step up in our technique. The, st the techniques uh, uh, starts with removing the free floating capsule exit, as I've seen now, and then splitting. Uh, the quadrants that or the, the shape you be created by the uh, by the machine using the OCT guided section of the fragments with minimal FACO power you need. You just need vacuum assisted with minimal FACO. It's, it becomes very easy. It comes in, in pieces. All the pieces are coming to very direct. The uh, uh, all the cortical material can be removed easily. We can see a very well centralized, clear capsular axis. And here we go. I'm injecting a trifocal IOL, which is the best for uh, 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 a refractive. Uh, Surgery procedure, very easy and well centralized. Just removing the viscoelastic from above and behind the IOL. Needs no effort just to centralize the IOL in place, giving the maximum benefit of a premium IOL that you implanted and the patient paid uh, for it. This is another case. This is a free floating capsulotomy. You just tilt the lens fragments to remove, to release the air bubble, the gas bubble. I don't do a hydrosection. I just 
remove the air bubble and start, this is the aspirate the, uh, the, the, the anterior capsule and start my routine. This is a topical case with a topical anesthesia. You can see that it's uh, the it's a sixteenth, not only uh, four quarters. The tubes are nicely separated. You just rotate easily. No problem with the rotation. Just separation. And start taking out the cubes and the quadrant with only vacuum, minimal FECO uh, power used during this technique. The cubes are nicely seen, very nice. I use the Catalyst platform, which is very nice and very effective. with no extra time as well. I used to do two, two patients at a time. My, my colleagues are doing the femto, I'm doing the FECO at the same time, or the, it doesn't take any extra time for doing the femto. You can easily take the cortical material with the routine by manual irrigation aspiration. Are not sticky, are not just doing fine. Can you planting the eye or any please? So removing the cord, the rest of the viscoelastic material and putting the lens in the perfect position. And her own hydration. It's not only for the easy cases. This is the hard cataract nuclear four with the floppy iris. Against all the thoughts that Femto is not working for hard cases, it definitely gives us a tool and hard saving uh, technique. Just takes, definitely it's the, the lenses are com coming quite easily. The FICO power used is minimum. This case has a floppy iris, it's on Flumax. So it definitely saved our day. You see, it's coming quite easily. It's already fragmented and emulsified. Very well sent to capsular access and subsequently very well, uh, good centration of the IR.
the routine. Just passing forward and then up perfectly well. Another case. Just remove the, the gas bubble by gently tilting the uh, lens, checking the free floating capsular axis, just taking out the axis and the air bubble and start divide, dividing the fragments and still taking it out. The cracks are very clear. We need just to crack it. You can remove it, no hydro section is needed. I remember when we started Femto, one, one of the most uh, 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 common difficulties is hydro dissection. And there are many techniques of doing this and many uh, invented cannulas. I don't use it anymore now. I don't do hydro section whatsoever. Coming, coming easily. It's fragmented, emulsified. And this is it. This is a radio same disk. This is also a very difficult case, which you can, as you can see, this is RK with the uh, old uh, era of the RKs and patients are coming now for cataract uh, are extremely what difficult the cases. Of the high pressure of the uh, film to suction cap. Sorry? Uh, aren't you afraid in the RK patient from the high pressure of the film to no, suction cap? No, no. I, check, I always check the RKs before I start. The, if there is any ectasia or something, I just postpone the no, cases. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about if I you suction cap, you might rupture the ear. No, it didn't happen before, no. It didn't happen. The problem is it has a case during cataract surgery. During the, the, I know, but that's why I check always that I check the R case before I'm doing this. If I see any case or anything out, I just don't do it. And go with the same technique as well. Did you do femto in this case? Yes, I did. What about the pupil? I mean, the pupil seems really small. I mean, the pupil came down after doing the, the femto. You know, it's okay. always there. Uh, the, at that time, I injected, you know, as you see, uh, we have seen in the, uh, the, in the beginning of the case, I injected uh, epinephrine. And I, I decided not to use the, the, the malubrin. It was not available at that time. But I should I continued with this? And in 25 I died. Because it was almost emulsified to those here. <clears throat> I didn't have difficulty in doing this. Good. That's a great case. And ended up perfectly fine. It's a good point, Dr. Muhammad, about the R key. Yeah, but sure. we always check this before doing the. Uh, yeah. Yes. Toric IOLs also is a, an advent, advantage for using uh, Femto in uh, such cases. Separation is quite easy. Rotation. And then start in the space. Mommy. 
just getting a positive and just in time by now. It's perfectly aligned. Some nice cases. You can always use uh, the uh, limb relaxing incisions. We have done uh, a series of cases. I'm doing fine. It's not very uh, uh, helpful before uh, more than plus, uh, one uh, diopter of astigmatism so far. So you can just add it to your technique. Not more than one doctor? Yes. Whatever the depth and... Sorry? Whatever the depth and extent of the radial incision, so the limb incision. Sorry? I mean that the depth of the incision and the extent are cleansed. Yes, there are, there are many, many nomograms regarding the, this technique, but overall the results are not more than one there. This is the chopper of Dr. Badawi. I think you know it, Dr. Tara. I was about to tell that. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm told, using it in a very different way with, uh, uh, yes. <laughs> with a diffuse nebula. It was also a hard, very hard case with the cornea opacity. Cornea was not great. This is an answer for one of the questions that some cases with cornea opacity can be a good candidate for this case as well. Yes. And also it went perfectly fine by the end. Much, much easier than going through a difficult uh, uh, conventional FICO technique. This chopper was a gift from Dr. Bedel. Gift, okay. Yes. We, want <laughs> we want our money back from Moria. Yes. No, this is manufactured by Katina. Katina, okay. Katina, Katina. I think we I designed that back then. Uh, 2013, something like that. And then we are using it for uh, regular cataracts as well. You see the center nebula in it. It was uh, it's not the case was extremely difficult, and just we went through the rest as we used. Just for the sake of the time, IOL implantation. So I think uh, FEM2 laser is uh, here to stay. Uh, I'm using it frequently. I know there is a debate about is it going to stay or not. I still believe in FEM2 laser. I'm still doing it and I believe in it. I think it's, it, it's going to be the future and it's going to uh, improve more. It's going to be uh, integrated into the, our machines at the same time, the vehicle machines at the same time. I hope we can just still live to see that day coming soon. Thank you so much for inviting me for this. Dr. And Dr. Ayman B, Al-Bristation Zarifa. Take care. You are talking to three of those who acquired for the first time in the Middle East. Me, Dr. Tare, and uh, Dr. Abdel Megid. We got yes. it for the first time in Egypt, and I did a few cases of that. Of course, uh, might be the newer versions of this one. Remember that, uh, that, that, remember that I am one of the victims. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> we are all victims, financial victims for this. But uh, uh, we will talk some scientific, and we'll, uh, could, uh, could you please allow me to start the discussion from the last one, then we'll go back. You're okay. Okay, uh, I mean that uh, uh, some of the audiences were asking about which case are suitable, which is not. For the, for the film too? Yeah, I'm talking about the film too. This is for the film too presentation. I think all, all the conventional cases are suitable for FEM2 laser in, in particular. You can just do any case that you can do. You are able to do it with the FEM, with the conventional FICO, you can just do it with the uh, 
uh, with the FEM2 uh, except definitely yeah. the, the uh, patients with a very narrow pupil that you can't do a capsular axis can go beyond uh, uh, 3 or 3.5 millimeter diameter unless you just put and you do it in two parts just go and dilate the pupil and bring the patient back to the to, to the docking machine and just do the FEM2 and get it back I think it may, makes a lot of us you can if just you can do it. sharing the screen so all our photos will be uh, available sorry you, uh, can you stop sharing the screen uh, First uh, okay. <coughs> stop sharing your screen from up I have a comment from Dr. Ayman, if I can, if you allow me. Yes, definitely. Uh, okay. Uh, Dr. Ayman, I think that FEM2 cataract was really a good input. Sorry for that. This is the good part. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, I think that FEM2 cataract is, is a good in, uh, but I was using that uh, back there in 2013 up to two Maya. years old. Maya? Maya. Oh, I'm But uh, for the economic, uh, uh, you know, uh, situations, I thought that I have to shift gears to other techniques like uh, using the, the laser for the femto laser for keratoplasty, like for uh, red. Like radial, sorry for that. Doug is barking about it. Oh, wow. uh, T, like for radial keratotomy. Uh, sorry for uh, for the uh, uh, ICR implantation, uh, and of course, of course, for the uh, arch uh, stigmatism, uh, arch uh, incision. Yeah. Yes. Um, I think that femtocatheter is here to stay for certain cases for chronic situation again, uh, for very specific cases like one eye patient, especially in the, the, when they have a small anterior chamber, like high myop, high hybrops, like uh, when they have junior problems, like when they have, they have endothelial uh, cell count, loose endothelial cell count. And, um, uh, you know, because of the such economic uh, cost, uh, I think I have to preserve this for uh, such cases and not to use them for all the patients. Unless I have someone to, uh, of course, to, uh, you know, uh, to finance that. What do you think? You will always find the patient that, uh, uh, the, uh, that wants to buy the Ferrari. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you know, it's time, it's time taking, time consuming, you know. Well, for us, I, I, we, we have just done a very nice circulation that we don't uh, use the time. It's the same time as I usually do with the, me and my colleagues. They are very uh, excellent. They may be better than I do. They are just, yes. We, yes, yes. Just, we do the thing. The, 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 the do the part, I think. Yes, no? Technician can do the fake, but uh, sorry, the no, no, I have a very, very, very skillful surgeon that I have with my team. Yeah. They, are, they are doing a great job. Are, sometimes I do the femto for them and they do the FECO and I do the FECO and they do the femto at the same time. It doesn't take any time. Just you have to prepare your circulation and you just do it with this and it doesn't take more than the six minutes that you can just take in a very manual routine FECO technique. Question, Dr. Ayman. Uh, after that, Dr. Ayman, how did you explain the radial and uh, what is the formula you depend upon uh, calculation I will? This is a great debate Yanni, about this, but I use the parrot uh, formula for the finding of this. Is it the prevalence of FEM to cataract in the states? Uh, variable. Uh, we have, I've used uh, both the Bosch and Lam laser and the Alcon laser. Um, and I got to say that I'm doing less and less femto every year. It's not a matter of economics um, because we have it set up in a way where uh, if a patient's opting for premium, premium intraocular lens, um, there's no extra cost for the FACO. I mean, there's no extra cost for the femto. Um, but I just uh, found, uh, I've just found over time, over the years, I'm using it less and less. I still use it for for if, I, if I'm trying to do um, arcuate incisions, uh, let's say a premium intraocular lens that's not a multifocal intraocular lens that's not a toric lens, 
I look for the thickness lens and I want to correct some astigmatism, I'll use the femto for that. But, uh, you know, I think you can get good flow and good circulation with it. Um, uh, you know, as far as OR circulation, if you have two surgeons. So if you have two surgeons, one surgeon is doing the temto and one surgeon is doing the cataract, and certainly that can be good. But I found that in, in ROR that it does, you know, there is, I have to go to uh, a separate, do a separate procedure and then go back and do the, the actual FACO. Yes. So I think there is a place for FEMTO, definitely. I think FEMTO, as the technology improves over time, becomes more integrated with, with FACO and um, uh, becomes, you know, as there's improvements in the technology, I think we're, we will do more FEMTO over time. I just don't think the technology is quite there yet for, for routine use or... Uh, Yes. Can, What's uh, the a question? Uh, another question, as regard the FICO, uh, as regard femto femto cataract uh, surgery, is it suitable, Doctor Ayman, the halat grade four or uh, impending cataract nigra? Yeah, I've, I've seen now. It's uh, yeah, we have. I've done. I think one of two OT cases that I showed today was the grade four uh, cataract. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't say it's very helpful, and at least in the cataracta negra that we have, sometimes we can see it. I have done few cases of uh, uh, of this negra patients. Uh, the the most important uh, or the most ad advantage of doing femto is actually direct. It does help. It does not penetrate hundred percent to the whole thickness of the lens. Definitely, I have to admit this. But it mean it makes life much easier than trying to do it with your manual fecal. I'm I'm a very good surgeon of uh, manual small incision. Uh, I have done ten thousands of cases like manual small incision in, in the low pay setup and the outreach uh, carbons. But I'm very familiar with the manual small incision cases. I just do the cataract negra with the manual small incision uh, technique, small uh, sutureless. Uh, with the FEM2, I can find that the REXIS is very nice. You can just do your FEM2, your REXIS complete, with, which is a, a difficulty in the manual FECO and, or manual uh, FECO emulsification. It's difficult sometimes. You can just do it freely with the FEM2. It's very nice. I did it, maybe I didn't show the videos today with the intumescent capture. It's, it's very, uh, very useful. Although sometimes it extends, it has also a potential for extension. I don't recommend using it quite uh, openly unless they are yeah, very uh, uh, confident of the of just yeah. I think we are, the complication. I think we, we, we could do other discussions because we are late now. It's uh, uh, just one last question to Dr. Ayman regarding the intumescent cataract and them to Later, okay. because we know that sometimes if you puncture the anterior capsule with the femto laser, you might end up with this intumescent material which obscures the laser from passing to uh, doing a, an accurate rexus. Have you faced That'd something be like this before? Yes, yes, I've seen this before, and this is what I've just said now. Maybe you didn't hear it, but here it might occur sometimes. I, I heard, uh, heard your opinion about yeah. it might extend, but uh, yes. about the, the intumescent material that will obscure the, the laser from doing the, the right practice. I no, think. no, I haven't met this. Yeah, sometimes you have some tags with the capsule rexus, although it does not exceed less than 1% of my cases. Sometimes these tags just can extend. I can see the Argentinian flex. That's why I, when I, with such cases, I always stay in before starting my fake work. Okay. I'll take a question Dr. Ayman Salah. We know, of course, that to learn how to do fake is like to learn how to drive. And everyone drive is his own way. Okay? It's a question Dr. Hatem Ammar. الحالات اللي حضرتك عرضتها اللي هي الاكستريم هارد كاتراكت براون كاتراكت ان ذات بيشنت 85 ييرز اولد اول وي نو وي اول نو ذات ذا ديسيجن تو دو كاتراكت سيرجري از ا سكورينج سيستم ايز اوف ايز اوف ايج اوف ذا بيشنت ستيت اوف بايمكولاريتي ديماند اوف ذا بيشنت ستيت اوف اندوسيليوم رايت Uh, ليه ما بنقررش في حاله زي اللي حضرتك عرضتها سنجل ايد او العيان اللي عنده 85 سنه ان احنا تو دو سيف سمول انسيجن كاتراكت سيرجري اور ايفن ايفن اكسترا كاب سيفلي 
معانا دكتور حاتم ولا معاك معاك تمام ومركز في السؤال اولا انا انا فيرستلي اول ماي بيشنتس دو سبيكولار مايكروسكوب روتين سبيكولار مايكروسكوب ان ماي كلينيك ات از دان لايك اي اول ماستر روتين ان ماي كلينيك فور اول بيشنتس شور اي ام هافينج جود اندوثيريا سيلكا اي سيلف اي شيفتد فروم اكسترا كاب تو فيكو اي ديدنت باس ان ذا ايرا اوف سمول انسيجن كاتاركت سيرجري ات هول اي دونت اي دونت دو ات اي فايند ذا تكنيك ويتش اي presented it is very effective in heart cataract. I feel always safe with fecal emulsification, even if rupture was through capsule. I have the capsule axis with a plant on the sulcus. When capsule was, and, uh, when pupil is narrow, I feel safe with the fecal emulsification than the extra cap. I feel the time of open sky when you open the anterior chamber to deliver the nucleus is a very critical time. If rupture, the steroid capsule, it will end by anterior chamber iron. In fecal emulsification, you nearly never implant anterior chamber iron. You implant in the sulcus with optic capture, you make the, even if lost the fragment in the posterior segment. Dealing with it with the posterior segment surgeon is much easier in fecal than with extra cap. You have water tight wound, everything is compartmented. The problem, only problem if you damage the endothelium. This can protect safely with this code, with knowing your machine. بصراحة المشين دي اللي أنا كنت عارض بيها في very hard more effective than the classical كان معايا اللي هي infinity. I was having infinity before and shifted to this machine or you can make use of centurion, not infinity, because it is effective in hard cataract. Infinity machine in brown or black cataract is a little of efficiency. Sometimes, while you are making the skull, you make subluxation of the zonular. Zonular dialysis occur with your mechanical pressure, even in 100% ultrasound. So I, I feel safe with fecal emulsification. In all cases, nearly I never start with a case with extra cap from the start, even with low endothelial cell count. I have cases which I was trying to present with endothelial cell count 1,200, and you'll see it, it finished with 900. With fake emulsification in grade four nucleus, black cataract, finished safely without a problem, but with two or three amples of the codes, with modulation of the energy and with the technique you prefer in your hands. I know many people recommend vertical chop in hard cataracts, but in my hands, the divide and conquer with this modification, I feel it give me best results in my hands. دكتور خضر استاذنكم السؤال للدكتور خضر في الحلقه يا دكتور محمد على بس على اذن حضرتك قبل ما نخرج من النقطه دي بس بس دكتور حاتم بس اي ارج يو فعلا تو تراي المانيوال سمول انسيجن سوتشرز مانيوال سمول انسيجن اتس بيرفكتلي فاين اتس اتس سوتس ذا بيشنتس بالفان اتس ماتش يعني سيفر ذان جاست تراينج تو دو افيكو ويز اول اوف ذا هارت بريكينج اند كرونري يعني تكنيكس اتس ديفينتلي ماتش بيتر I have done a study before, uh, in, maybe 10 years ago, uh, comparing the results, including even the endothelial cell count, which found that even small incision in such cases, grade three and grade four, is uh, uh, endothelial cell saving more than FACO. Sure. Uh, cases. Yes. It is almost very like Dr. Ayman. I agree with Dr. Ayman. Successful cases, it is almost very like. Yes. No, 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 no. I, I, I disagree. Maybe, maybe in the experts of a small incision cutter, yes. there is still yes. some, yes. some the older age surgeons say that extra cap is better than fecal emulsification. Sometimes, yes. Uh, uh, which I, is going in your hands. In Upper Egypt, we have plenty of these cases. I never have less to result two or three cases of brown or black cutter. It is everyday practice. Not like in, in, in the nose. You find these cases very rarely. I, uh, I, I I find it no problem with it in fecal emulsification. I, I would say for 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 from my experience that I never do a hard cataract with fecal, uh, specifically if it is single eyed. A small incision cataract surgery is the best and safest alternative for fecal and hard cataract. If I you agree. go to the Indian work, it is very effective, very safe, and very gentle to the endothelium, and. It, with experienced surgeons, the problem is that uh, for the non-experienced surgeon who try to attempt do a small incision cataract surgery, it will end with disastrous results 
but the, the prerequisites for small incision cataract surgery is very close to that of FACO. And it is costless, effective, and safe. And the question now is for Dr. Mohammed Khidr. For the case that you presented, the first case with the spherophakia, uh, I see that you didn't use a capsule hooks to support the lens bag during your IA. Uh, wouldn't it be uh, worse wise to use it? Uh, <clears throat> congenital uh, ectopia lentis, yeah. whatever the area of the hastens, the remaining zinules are very good and very intense. You can't depend on it. I'm not need for uh, capsular hooks uh, because the the bag is inflated with uh, viscoelastic capsular tension ring retains the uh, the equator uh, nearly in its place. Uh, in, in, if the if the case is traumatic and the other zinules are weak. Yes, you can need uh, the uh, the capsular uh, hooks. Yeah, uh, but the capsular, the CTR, can yeah. replace this uh, hooks. But Doctor Mohammed, if the two mill that you are saving from the anterior capsule, I am not able to protect them. Wait, for the CTR insertion, in in we now saw through our presentations that we implanted the CTRs in different situations. One was Dr. Khed that he implanted the CTR in the cases with soft cataract, so the remaining lens uh, matter is very soft and gentle, and I implanted it while I still have uh, the AB nucleus. I think that implantation of the CTR at different stages, it should vary. Every case is different from the other. For Dr. Khed, he could implant it any time, even Depend removal Depend of any nuclear material? Yes, depend on the state of the case. Yeah. In, in case of congenital, uh, I, I say that the, the other zinules are intact. And I not manipulate more and more. And I don't make traction on the, on the, uh, on the uh, zinules or the capsule because the lens matter is soft. The I can delay the implantation of the CTR. The in hard, in hard, in hard cataract like second case, nuclear grade three. Yeah. No, there is many manipulation, rotation, fracture, and so on. You I must support the the equator uh, well by CTR before I starting the uh, FICO uh, shop or divide and conquer anyhow. Uh, for uh, Doctor Hatem. I, I think the decision when to implant CTR depends on the surgeon and the case. But the general, rule, the, the general rule is at late, as late and safe as possible. Yes, right. Uh, as have, late and safe. Yeah, just I have another question. I have implant it before, just have the sick and the plant the CTR. Yeah. And uh, the okay. Okay. For, when, for when, you, when you take decision, when you take decision, when to implant the CTR, you think about the priority. What is your priority for this case? Priority to implant IOL. If I don't implant the CTR, once the vitreous knuckle come with me in the second case to the center, I can't retain the, 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 uh, the equator at its original position again. Dr. Khedr. The CTR sub will supporting even with vitreous strand come with me in IA or in FACO uh, techniques. Doctor, just, just do vitrectomy, everything is retained back again. If yes. you have a traumatic cataract and you are not sure about the status of the posterior capsule, are you going to implant the CTR before knowing the exact status of the posterior capsule? Aren't you afraid that it might go posteriorly and uh, much damaged the posterior capsular tear if it is there? No, posterior capsular tear. I examined well the patient. About traumatic cataract and you are not sure about the status of the posterior capsule. I mean, what, what happened for the posterior capsule from the plant trauma? No. Just the zinules, the hastens in the zinules and vitreous knuckle uh, go in front of the, in the anterior chamber. Nothing, nothing at all. Doctor, and with Dr. Patient, Dr. Tarek? 
مين فينا دكتور طارق بدا ولا دكتور طارق طارق النجار ساكت بقاله كتير قول لنا حاجه انا كنت عايز اسال دكتور حاتم نغير الموضوع شويه في القصه دي انا الريفيرس دي نطلع الحته اللي بعدها يا حضرتك آه انا 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 معاكم في موضوع السي تي ار الامبلانتيشن بتاع السي تي ار انا بتكلم في التروماتيك والبوستور كول يو ار ان داوت اه دكتور حاتم انا لو عندي اي قلق من البوستير كابسول اوبند اي وود ريفرين فروم امبلانتينج سي تي ار اكشلي لان انا ممكن حتى وانا بامبلانت سواء انجكتور او مانيوال اي مايت اند اب ان انا يعني دايركتينج ذا سي تي ار في الانتيريو فيتر سبيس او ميبي ان ذا بوستير سيجمنت اند ات هابند تو مي وان انا هاد تو ريموف ات فعشان كده انا يعني اي هاف تو ميك شور ان المنطقه دي ستيت لو انا عندي بوستير كابسول اوبننج صغيره سنترال وانا شايفها كويس اي كان ستيل امبلانت بس لو هي ناحيه الزونيولز وانا مش شايفها كويس اود ان امبلانت ذا سي تي ار في الحته دي دكتور حاتم تحب تقول حاجه؟ يعني لو حتى التروماتيك كاتاركت وسسبيشس سسبيشس يعني اي ان شيفت تو كابسولار هوكس تو سبورت ذا كابسولار اكسس اند افتر فينشنج اند كلينج ذا لينس اند ذا كورتكس نيوكليس اند كورتكس اي مي انجكت The CTR, but maybe Dr. Khadr evaluate the case on the slim clamp. Yeah. Khadr case is different, you know. Dr. Khadr case is different. And I mean, exactly for the procedure. Yeah. That's because why he he prefer to not. Yeah, sure. That's why his answer was completely. Sure. sure. Yeah. That, but he, he is also your senior, so he knows more than me and you. <laughs> of course, not just health. And her. Dr. Mela. He is the senior of the family. نعم يو ماست ريسبكت السينيور كان في الاخر نايم خالص خالص ما اقدرش اخالف دكتور ملاح دكتور طارق انك ده فور مي دكتور ملاح نعم دو يو هاف سمثينج تو اد ان ذيس بوينت نو اي وود اجري اي مين اف ذيرز اف يو اف يو ار نوت شور اباوت ذا بوستير كابس اون تيكري اي وود نوت امبلانت ذا سي تي ار ذا نيكست كويشن از How did you utilize the use of the different viscoelastic in cases of ruptured posterior capsule, or you have some vitreous prolapse? Which material and how frequent to use it, and for what to use it? Who is going to answer? Doctor Hatem, and then Doctor Nagar, and then Min, and then. Ruptured posterior capsule. You must use dispersive viscoelastic. By the The best is the scoot if you have it. If you, I, I routinely make you soft shell technique, so I always have the scoot on my on, on my table routine. If you don't have the scoot, you can inject methyl cellulose. If you don't have methyl cellulose or the scoot, you can inject hero. Anything you find, you can inject. Sure. But when you are injecting the hero, you must keep the keep the fecal tip in the anterior chamber, but stop irrigation. As long as there is irrigation, hero will come out immediately. In, in, in contrast to viscoat, which will stay in place. So I usually inject viscoat at the opening of the capsule to plug it, and sometimes inject hero in front of it. Okay? So dispersive, it is better. Dr. Nagar? Totally agree with Dr. Hatem. I used to answer the same answer until I heard David Chang Saying it loud and clear, you have a, a vitreous in the anterior chamber, or you have an opening in the posterior capsule while you are taking a probe inside the eye. Inject whatever on the table. You don't of course. for dispersive. You just you just inject. If you're using helon, just inject helon until you revert to dispersive, of course. But but you start with whatever on the table. I agree. I agree with you. The the first. When, whenever I started to do FACO, I always instruct and Dr. Khid and Dr. Abgid know that there's one ampoule is opened on the table and one stand by inside the room. You know, no one can jump outside. You can open it within one or two minutes maximum. And we always have two types one, of... One and two minutes is too much because if you have a probe know, inside I the eye, you, have, <laughs> you want to inject you have, uh, any OVD and get rid of your phaco probe from inside the eye. Dr. Tarek, as long as continuous irrigation is still present, don't worry to wait 10, yeah. 10 seconds or 20 seconds to use the ideal one. Sure. I had yes, yes, I know, but... But, but never switch it off. 
The problem is if never you never switch it off, but oh, still oh, you're risking oh, hydrating oh, the vitreous. You're risking hydrating I, the vitreous with the fluid. Uh, no, no, but no, no, if no, you, no. If you have as it as on, as even as on table, you, you can much. inject it. I, 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 I have experience with many cases. As long as you are having a stable anterior chamber without aspiration, things stay the same. But I agree. It's okay with aspiration when you aspirate. Dr. Khazr, I want to say Okay. I hope this, inshallah, see you uh, again. Do... No? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 ربنا يسهل ان شاء الله ماشي يا جماعه شكرا شكرا ماشي شكرا يا جماعه كانت واز ا فيري نايس شيرنج برزنتيشنز احنا خدنا وقت طويل جدا احنا داخلين دلوقتي في حوالي اربع ساعات ساعات من ثمانيه من ثمانيه كنت مع فرد فانا حاجه كمان تتصحر دلوقتي تتصحر كمان شويه يا دكتور حاتم فانا هستاذنكم يا دكتور عبد الحاج بالصحر الساعه 1 احنا قاعدين اصلا ما حضرش حضرتك انا ما حضرش حضرتك أنا ريلي من ثمانية خلص أيمن ها؟ إن شاء الله إحنا هنخلص الحتة بتاعت الفيسكو إلاستيك وفي سؤال أخير بتاعت البيست أنتير فيتريكم تكنيك أنا عايز أسألك دكتور أيمن قبل ما يطالب اتفضل يا دكتور ملاح حضرتك عشان ما نعطلكش الله يكرمك دكتور ملاح اتفضل أنت حضرتك مع السلامة اتفضل اتفضل دكتور طارق أوكي طارق اتفضل سؤالك أنت الأول أنت ساكت من بدري مش قادر أكلمك وأنت جنرال أيوه يا طارق أوكي دكتور أيمن Do you need to be uh, to have a, a clear a clear cornea all the time when you do femto cataract? It's advisable to have a clear cornea most of the time. But if you have a central nebula, you can just go through it. If you don't have a scarred archaea, as you have seen in uh, in, my, in the presentation, you can just go over it. No problem. I and don't advise problem. having having uh, op uh, opacity just in the way of doing the capsulotomy or capsulotomy. And if you, you have, have regular corneas, just you to lose, uh, yes. Hmm? If you have some irregular corneas and you have to do the surgery as well in some certain situation, uh, you think that the, the laser if it's will clear, be if it's good clear, enough? You can just go if, if it's clear. Yeah, I mean, some irregular corneas, some faint opacity. Like keratoconus or like something like this. The keratoconus. Oh. So what do you think about keratoconus? You no, know, you can just you can just do because you aplanate the cornea by the, yeah. by the ducting. You know, I, um, they, the, before they said that uh, the, uh, the effect of pressure in the, the you know, the uh, patient surface is reflect, you know, is indenting the cornea, giving some uh, prismatic effect. So the, the delivery of the laser won't be uh, homogeneous to the capsule, and then you will get some tags. Of course, you're aware of that. Um, I once had a case of uh, keratoconus and cataract as well and we had that platform of uh, vectors which can do post cornea and cataract as well okay and uh, we uh, i took the that chance and i uh, tried to do that on a on a some hastiness of the cornea and regularity of the cornea because of the keratoconus and i thought at the time according to the literature at the time it won't work, but to my surprise, it worked it well, and we did very good capsule, yeah. and we completed that triple procedure of uh, cataract, uh, deep lamellar keratoplasty, and IOL as well, and the same uh, machine. Yeah, perfectly. I think it does. Yes, I did. I think it's it's here to stay at the Kultar. Allah. Okay, yeah, but there's certain <laughs> indications. As it back, back to the last point for the viscoelastic. Uh, I agree with Dr. Hatem that the, the fastest is the best. And I think if you have a dispersive viscoelastic, it will do 
decompartmentalize the vitreous from the anterior chamber and my tamponade the vitreous posteriorly and I had demonstrated this in two cases today. One in a very small wound and one in a moderate uh, rent in the posterior capsule and it succeeded to push the vitreous posteriorly till I finished removal of the nucleus and finished removal of the uh, cortex as well. Uh, and the third thing uh, is the last question from my side and the audience is what is the best technique for anterior vitrectomy? Did you go it in a closed way? Number two, do you always stain with the thramsin alone? Number three, do you do it from anterior or posterior? You bought your probe above the posterior, the posterior capsule or behind the posterior capsule. Who is going to answer? Can you uh, the question? I don't have, I didn't the hear. Is about the anterior, I think, the best technique I for anterior vitrectomy. I think this question had been raised in the uh, Journal of Cataract and Refractive Surgery several times. Uh, you, my opinion is just uh, going for a closed system, as you said, number one. If you want to listen to the questions, then you, I'll go to you. You do it in a closed system, number two. Do you always stay in with Tramsin loan, number four? Uh, do you have to put the, the tip of the group behind the posterior capsule or anterior to the posterior capsule? Use it from the anterior chamber or from the bars plan? Dr. Ayman Salah, Fadr. Uh, I think uh, 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 going through a closed system is not an option. You have to do it all the time. Okay, yeah, this is, yeah, this is very important. Okay. Number two, if you have the facility just to do it from the first plan, you have, number two is you have to stain. If you have the, op if you have the availability of the stain or the triumph, you know, you have to do it all the time. It's not, uh, it's not an option. In uh -huh. Number three, is if you have the uh, ability or the capability or the, just to do it first planner, I think you have to do it. Not for what me. about the extent of the anterior vitrectomy? Should you do just the limited anterior vitrectomy above the posterior capsule or you go a little bit by the No, if you are going to do an a first planner, just you have to go in behind the posterior capsule. First planner. Yeah. Okay, Dr. Abdel Mejid. I agree with Dr. Ayman. Close the system, stain if you can. Close the system, stain if you can. Just posterior, just behind the posterior capsule, either through the rent or uh, through bars plan. I stay all the time. Totally uh, agree. I can't add more. Stain, of course, and uh, close system, of course. Sorry, by the way. You can do it first, and it's better. Yeah, I stain all the time with uh, Tremsen alone, and w if I find any vitreous in the uh, posterior uh, chamber, I, um, I really go behind the, the, uh, the posterior capsule through the opening and I try not to dilate it. So I'm, I use a very low vacuum and, uh, you know, very, very low uh, uh, aspiration, irrigation aspiration. Uh, yeah. Flow rate, like, 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 I mean, what is the section parameter and the cutting grip parameter? I, I forget to ask about this. You know, it's uh, it's variable. Uh, I see that in, in the eye. It's variable, really. The the only thing that I don't need the the the, the capsule to be pulled towards the the, the vitrectomy uh, tip, and I don't want to, to enlarge the uh, the the opening. So uh, I really play with that. Uh, Parameters to get the the stable and uh, <clears throat> stable um, ch uh, situation when the, the capsule is not moving a lot, and the um, uh, the, the thing that I don't like to uh, anyway to enlarge that capsule. Doctor okay. Chetr, uh, until you track to me, uh, it's better to uh, stain with Kinacord. Uh, I, I not uh, advise to go parse plan a vitrectomy. Uh, I prefer to do anterior vitrectomy enter, uh, through the lumbar wound, whatever side port or main incision, and it's uh, and the vitrectomy uh, should be slightly behind the posterior capsule, starting from steel, and after staining we remove the vitreous F. It is present in the anterior chamber.
دكتور حاتم ماي سيلف اي نوت اولويز ستين فور فيتجس اي يوجوالي فيل كومفورتابل وذاوت ستيرينج اي نو ستين از ماتش بيتر بات اي فيل كومفورتابل I know the trend nowadays to posterior approach, but I feel completely comfortable with the, the, the side ports, but never from the main incision. The paracentesis and exchange my hands, but I, you always remember to reduce the bottle height to make the posterior capsule just flat, not so low, otherwise the vitreous will bulge, or not high to avoid hydration of the vitreous. Cut rate maximum, cut rate available in the machine, and the signature through I use to, to 2,500, and the infinity is just 800, sufficient. Flow rate is low, vacuum is low, but I feel comfortable from the paracentesis without need for posterior part the plan incision. I, I don't feel it is needed in all in, in no it? one case in my hands, not limited to that in the bag, I must go behind the posterior capsule, zero to it, and remove a part of the vitreous to make the posterior capsule free if I want to convert it into posterior capsule axis, or even leave it without any strands of vitreous in the anterior chamber. If I did it stain, I shift to the sweeping of the spatula. It usually give me a clue, a good clue. If I find something, I may stain, but very rare to stain, really, in my hands. Okay. Shall, I, shall I add something? Uh, I, for, for myself, at least, I usually go through the same board, not through the main incision. If I have only one board from the side, I mean that I always do one main incision and two side boards. If I have only one side board, I go for one for irrigation and the other one I use the, the sleeve of the machine over the cutting probe or the irrigating probe through the main wound and I do the vitrectomy. So I make it totally closed. Number two, if it is a small wound, I could use uh, uh, Tram syndrome. If it is large posterior capsular tear, and I have a case like this, it will go posteriorly and it will disturb the reflex. For the cutting rate and the uh, of the machine and the uh, uh, the suction, I use a low suction, not more than 150, and I use the maximum cutting rate of the machine. Uh, to put it anterior or posterior, I will always go just behind the posterior capsule. To, and the board of the vitrectomy cutter directed anteriorly, so it cuts the vitreous which is going up. So it was draw vitreous from the anterior chamber to the back, without going through the bars plana, and without it was drawing more vitreous from the uh, posterior chamber. Uh, this is for and always I I do this technique after filling the anterior chamber with viscoelastic cohesive one or missile cellulose. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the participants, Shukran, Dr. Tari Nagar, Dr. Khidr, Dr. Tari Badawi, Dr. Kumar. Uh, many thanks, Dr. Ayman Salah. Saharnakum and Naharda, Dr. Mohammed Musamma, may come in the Lakhir. I don't know what I'm saying. 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 شكرا <تصفيق> شكرا 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 جزيلا وتشوفكوا دايما على خير وكل سنه وانتم طيبين ودايما نتقابل كده في المناسبات السعيده ان شاء الله خير ان شاء الله شكرا 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 شكرا